after seven race days across four rounds and over five long months, reaching an audience of over one billion people worldwide. Today, in Singapore, it's time to crown our Super League triathlon champion and hand out over 1.5 million US dollars in prize money. The second half of a race weekend that's already seen its fair share of thrills and spills. <laughs> We've got a clean start. It's an early statement by Cassandra Beaugrand. But here it's going to come down to the run. Katie Zafiris continues on her winning ways and wins the women's eliminator. I do like it. <laughs> Let's get things underway in the men's eliminator. And here we go. Vincent Lewis, our championship leader, has dropped right down the order. He's got a flat. That is unbelievable. This throws things right up. I would keep an eye on my back next time. <laughs> Big slip there. A very, very costly false start. Leo Bergier of Rusty Shoes. This time it's Brownlee attacking early. Mizzichuk goes with him. It's a big, big win for Jonathan Brownlee, who can sense potentially a championship win. Then I kicked together and I thought, oh, I'm on my own. This is good. I've not had this for a long time. But no, I really, really enjoyed that. What a day it was yesterday, the opening day of grand final weekend for the 2018-19 season of Super League Triathlon. Another step forward for Katie Zafiris, our leader in the women's. She is just one step away from 100,000 US dollars. Fantastic racing yesterday. It's going to get even better today. We can't wait for the action to get underway. The women's enduro is very, very soon. My name is Will McCloy. Alongside me, Chris McCormack, the founder of Super League Triathlon and a man who had a pretty tough day yesterday. Our championship leader in the men's, Vincent Lewis, and he's been so kind to talk to us uh, ahead of the men's enduro a little bit later on. But, Vincent, tough day for you. First puncher in 15 years. I saw a picture of the staple that did it. It was tiny. Bad luck. Yeah, exactly. That's quite a bad luck, but that was yesterday. Today's a new day. I'm really looking forward to racing. I'm a bit more fresh than my opponents, I guess. So we'll see what happened today, but I'm, I'm really impassioned. What was uh, interesting is we saw it on the, the package as well. As we see the vision of you putting the back out there, a little bit Tokyo Drift style, which I liked. So thanks for the flashiness. But uh, you said you needed to keep a closer eye on your bike. Some people thought that meant you thought maybe there was sabotage, but that was just you making sure everything was right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I had already a problem before Mallorca Super League, and uh, that was my entire fault. And today, yeah, I maybe had to double check my tires before racing or whatever. No, but I, I, I don't want to push any name on it or whatever. It's only my own fault, and that, that's just what I want to mean. That's, that, what I mean, sorry. We'll talk about your plan in just a second. This is the race for the title as it stands at the moment. At the top is Vincent Lewis, of course, 75 points, but underneath him, Henry Schumann, who's now certainly in the box seat after a fourth position yesterday. Richard Murray fell off the pontoon. Geez, it was an interesting race yesterday. Johnny Brownlee won. Well, he was on 46 points, and he's uh, added a few to that. If Schumann finishes first or second today, he's almost certainly going to be the champ. That's what the uh, equation results in. If he finishes below second, he can still win the title, but Brownlee and the man standing next to me, Vincent Lewis, are the next most likely. All three of those in with a big, big shot. What's your plan today? Uh... I would say beating Henry or wi winning the race, but yeah, I have to do both. Uh, winning the race for sure, that's the only thing I can handle, I can, I can do and manage myself. But yeah, basically it's not a, a, a big mistake to say I will help other people uh, to race well and trying to put people between Henry and me, or me and Henry, I, I would love it. <laughs> but yeah, I, I would love to have some guys like Johnny or Tyler with us, or even Aiden, Aiden White. And yeah, just trying to, to put all together for a sprint finish. I'm not going to ask you, but Mackie, if this was you, if you were in Vincent's position, would you be sitting at breakfast just having a quiet word with some of the uh, other guys and just making sure they're on the right team? Well, he can't just go out there and win today. He has to put people between him and Henry Schumann. You wouldn't have scripted this yesterday. We thought it was going to be a foregone conclusion. We know Vincent came in in, in extravagant form and uh, it all went out the door with that flat tyre. So it's going to be a very, very interesting race on the men's side and I can't wait to call it. All right, we are looking forward to the men's enduro, and I'm sure Vincent is as well. It's going to be a fantastic race, but before that, the women's enduro is going to be fantastic. Katie Zafiris has been so dominant. She won the first two rounds in Jersey and Malta. She had a fall in Mallorca, finished third overall, but she had a big win yesterday in the Eliminator, and that means she is almost certain, but anything can happen. She's almost certain, though, to take out $100,000 on the title of Super League champion. This is the race for the title as it stands for the women. 71 points. Kirsten Casper grayed out there because she is not here. She is hoping that Rachel Clammer and Taylor Spivey don't take too many points so that she can keep her second position. Clammer and Spivey 
Well, they are in a match race, effectively, for 50,000 US dollars and perhaps 100,000 if something untoward happens to Katie Zafir. As that is how it all shakes out. We cannot wait for this one. If the men's eliminator taught us anything yesterday, it's that anything can happen in Super League triathlon racing. It's been a fantastic week for all the athletes. They've enjoyed, well, it's very tense now, but they've enjoyed a week in Singapore seeing some of the sights. I'm Katie Zafiris and I am currently at the Gardens by the Bay in Singapore. This is my first time in Singapore. I've never been, so it's pretty awesome to be in a new place. Now we're sans air conditioning because uh, we're trying to get used to the temperature. I find Singapore to be like a pretty big mixture of a lot of different places. It's just an awesome mixture between both greenery and culture. So today we're going to go to the Skyway, which is right behind me, and then we're going to go to the Cloud Forest. So we are in Gardens by the Bay in Singapore and actually in the Skyway. It's 22 meters above the ground so it's quite impressive but it's a nice place. Yeah, today it's a bit high for me. <laughs> I really do like Singapore. It's like clean city, people are really polite and we had like a warm welcome and yeah, it's one of my favorite cities. Singapore culture is quite mixed. I think that's a good mix, they take the best of everything. We're at the Cloud Forest and we're about to see an indoor waterfall. It's pretty nice. I enjoy the heat, but it's definitely nice to come here to escape. Singapore is great so far. I mean, very, very pretty. There's uh, a cool city centre, but um, it doesn't feel too overwhelming. There's a lot of greenery and it's, uh, yeah, just really well kept. All right, there was Vincent Lewis enjoying the gardens with a moustache, but now with no moustache, just a little bit faster, mate. Uh, yeah, I hope so. I hope so. I wish you. <laughs> Take anything. Drop all weight you can. Let's talk about the women's, though. Katie Zafiris has to finish seventh or higher for the round. She won yesterday already. She's taken one big step closer. Is there any situation that you can envisage where Katie Zafiris is not our champion at day's end? Well, look, on the form guide, it looks impossible. I said the same yesterday with Vincent Lewis coming into this race. On the form guide impossible to lose but anything can happen in this style of racing flat tires crashes we saw Daniel Di Francesco come down yesterday Taylor had an incident on the on the bike so it's not over yet it never is in Super League triathlon racing we speak about Taylor Spivey that's obviously Vincent's better half I imagine after what happened to both of you yesterday it was a quiet night in the hotel room there would have been a little bit of uh, anger and frustration but how is she today yeah, I think she's fine. Uh, she actually lost her wallet yesterday and find it like back this morning, so she was quite happy. <laughs> so let's 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 hope today brings a bit more luck to us. But uh, yeah, she, she's fine. Uh, her shoulder doesn't hurt anymore. So yeah, I, I think she will be angry to, to 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 beat everyone, trying to take over Rachel on the on the overall. And I'm quite confident she can do it. A fifty thousand dollar match race—that's high stakes, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, yeah I, I still hope to win more than her, but yeah, <laughs> if she can pay the dinner tonight, we'll be fine. <laughs> All right, Vince, thanks very much for your time. Go and warm up. We can't wait to see you in action. Thank you. I, I, will, I will do my best. All right, let's have a look at what the Enduro is all about. We can't wait for this one. The Enduro, designed as the ultimate test of an athlete's physical stamina and their mental grit. Long brutal, unforgiving and simple. Swim, bike, run, okay, that seems fine, but then do it again, and then do it again. Three triathlons back to back to back. No room for rest, no room for error. Nine legs, eight transitions, and a live elimination with two athletes cut at the end of each discipline. 16 athletes will fall on the way to the final leg, survive and earn a chance to run to victory. A unique combination of pace and strategy, conservation and aggression. The Enduro, prepare for the ultimate test. It's called the Enduro for a reason. It's about staying mentally sharp while you dig deeper than ever before with eight transitions across nine legs. Two athletes eliminated at the end of each leg and if you survive that, you make it through to the race finish. That is an achievement all in itself. The Enduro, one of the toughest formats ever devised. 
Well, conditions down here at the waterfront are ideal for swimming, but it is an absolute scorcher here today, and I think perhaps even a little bit hotter than yesterday. There's an air of tension amongst the athletes, but they're looking surprisingly refreshed after yesterday's eliminator race, which was run by series leader Katie Safiras. Katie, how are you feeling following your race yesterday? Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. It's definitely warm today, and with the heat and humidity, it took a lot more out of yes, like what we did yesterday. So uh, I'm excited to be finished. So my motivation is the faster I go, the faster I'm done. But um, yeah, it'll be good. Okay, so we're going to have to mention your top because you found a good way of keeping cool. Yeah, so um, I just have ice right now in my chest, and then I've been pouring uh, cold water on my shoulders just to try and keep cool before we go. Um, this time we don't have breaks to kind of refresh ourselves, so we just have to rely on what we do before. And um, there's some uh, water on the course, so make sure that you pick that up. Well, yesterday's event, both in the men and the women's, was fairly eventful. You will, of course, be trying to stay out of trouble, but you have a pretty convincing lead in the series. How confident are you going in to this format, which we know you love? Yeah, I mean, I'd like to say I'm super confident, but at the same time, like, you saw what happened to Vince yesterday. Like, there's uncontrollables, there's things that happen, ways you feel, so um, I'm just going to give it my best shot. Great stuff, Katie. We're going to really look forward to seeing you race. Thank you. Well, there still is, of course, plenty to play for here in Singapore. But this race is not just going to play into the hands of the athletes that are mentally and physically strong, but the athletes that can deal with this searing heat and a really tough technical bike course. Another beautiful day here in steamy Singapore. We cannot wait to get underway. Will McCloy and commentary alongside Chris McCormack. And the name we're all counting on, at least the Americans are, is Katie Zafiris with a 31-point lead into this weekend and a win yesterday as well. Summer Rappaport, she's up there or thereabouts as well. Danielle DeFrancesco, very unlucky yesterday. She's racing for a contract. All of our top ten will get contracts into next season. Taylor Spivey, number four, and Ash Gentle, number 84. Watch out for both of them. And number 55 from France, Cassandra Beaugrand, who finished second yesterday and has been a revelation since joining this competition. Hilda Choi and Kim Kilgrow, two of the local Asian athletes, and Lucy Hall as well coming back from Glandula Fever, who's such a fantastic swimmer and one of the sole Brits in the field, which is, um, well, a bit, of, a bit of a different vibe to what we've had before. We've had plenty of, of Brits uh, across the course of the series, including Jody Stimson, who's not here in fifth position. Spivey's in fourth, Rachel Clammer in third. You can see only two points between them. They finished fifth and seventh yesterday, so we keep saying a match race for second position with Kirsten Casper, the American number 91, not here, still dealing with an injury niggle. They're all chasing Katie Zafiris, though. Charlotte Machane and Cassandra Beaugrand right on the bubble in terms of contracts, 15 points apiece, and there are plenty of talented women chasing them as well. There is no doubt about that. We cannot wait to start this one. Here is the course map, same as yesterday, straight out for about 145 metres, two turns. Those boys are very close together, so there's plenty of chop there to contend with. Up the ramp, out onto the bike course. It's 900 metres. We take five laps. It's completely flat. There is a chicane at the bottom of your screen. There's a few changes of surface as well, which are a little difficult. We saw plenty of accidents yesterday. The run course is the same, 900 metres, two laps along that course line with plenty of fans here in Singapore who are very much enjoying what Super League Triathlon has to offer. It's going to be a fantastic day's racing. The Enduro is such a tough one. Nine legs with eight transitions. They're all chasing Zafira. She'll be in pink. Our swim, bike and run splits. We don't see the run split there because that's Kirsten Casper, but Rachel Klammer will be in green as the fastest biker in Mallorca. Jeff Coat as the fastest swimmer. And transition leader is Yuko Takahashi, the best in transition. It is hot and steamy here. Humidity 61%. I can't believe that. The water temperature, look at that, 29 degrees, just two below. So they're about to jump into a sauna, which is going to offer no relief whatsoever. There is Zephyrus, number 16, alongside her, Cassandra Bogra, who led every swim yesterday. Nine legs, swim, bike, run, swim, bike, run, swim, bike, run. At the end, our champion will be crowned, and we are off. A nice start from everyone. Clara Dorner there, held up by Zephyrus, and there is Bogra alongside her. But in the middle, that is Lucy Hall. Thank you. 
very, very important to have a good swim at the start of this. We know how hard it is to come back once you're on the bike course. There's not a lot of room for error out there. There's not a lot of room to pass either. So a good swim and good positioning is key. As we saw Ashley Gentle, for example, have to battle back from a couple of tough swims and rely on her other leg that really took it out of her. And she was gallant in her third position yesterday. She's the only one who managed to weave her way through the field like that. So the women are approaching the first boy. We can see how close together the two of them are. And I think it's Cassandra Bogran who remains in the lead, but a lot tighter, I suppose. Bogran was about, I'd say, three lengths ahead each time yesterday. And there's no doubt this is a slower swim because these women know exactly how hard this is going to be in this heat. The enduro leaves no room for error whatsoever. That's, a, that's Emma Jeffcoat, Danielle DeFrancesco, and it looks like another, I think that's Summer, Summer Rappaport right there. So they've, they've had a magnificent start because surprisingly, Cassandra Bogram, we saw this in Jersey. She was magnificent on day one of racing and it's all, between, it's all what happens in the recovery between these two races. Yesterday was ridiculously hot. They were destroyed after the event and the recovery between now, well, yesterday and now is critical and Cassandra, we saw this in Jersey, was just not as good on the Sunday's racing as she was on the Saturday. Spoke to Danielle DeFrancesco at breakfast this morning. There she is in the middle of those three leaders, the Australian. She's renowned for her swim. She knows she needs to have a very good swim. She, as I say, is racing for a contract, a top 10 spot. There's athletes like Yuko Takahashi, Charlotte McShane, Ashley Gentle, Emma Jeffcoat and DeFrancesco all aiming for a contract for next season if they can finish in the top 10. If they don't, and all the other athletes, if they want to race in season 2019-20, will have to go to one of three qualifying events, which are filled, at least the one in Bali, which is yeah. next month, with quality athletes who know that they want to be a part of this series as well. Yeah, you saw, you saw Rachel Klammer, who's right on Emma Jeffcoat's feet. She's had a magnificent start, got around that first swim boy perfectly. Emma Jeffcoat in the blue swimmer's jersey. You'll see in the green jersey, right behind her is Emma Jeffcoat with Lucy Hall. That's uh, Rachel Klammer, oh, sorry, Rachel Klammer, with Lucy sorry. Hall, yes. yes. So a good swim from Emma Jeffcoat, a good swim from Danielle DeFrancesco. They led out of the water yesterday and led the first couple of laps on the bike along with Taylor Spivey. Danielle crashing yesterday, so yep. to get back Spivey up and be out well. there today. Yeah. But you've got to look at what's happening at the back of the pack because the last two athletes that get up at this, out of this swim exit onto the ramp will be taken out of the race. They will be eliminated. That will happen in each discipline today. So it's what's happening at the front is critical, staying out of problems and staying out of trouble, staying close but not drifting too far back in each discipline, otherwise you're gone. That's right, two eliminated at the end of the swim, two at the bike, two at the run, that happens every single discipline as we say. Jeff Coat out of the water, De Francesco as well. There is Klammer, there is Yuko Takahashi. Taylor Spivey. Taylor Spivey's out of the water too, she's safe, Zephyrus is safe. Who's gonna come out last? Of course, it's when we cross the timing mat, which is at the top safe. of this ramp. Who's at the back there? Is it Aaron Story and potentially Elena Danilova? Gone. That Those flag, two are gone already. The yellow flag put up by Michael Thompson, the race referee, is what you'll see all day for the last two athletes. Once they see the yellow flag, they're eliminated. They're either falling 90 seconds back, or they will be eliminated for being the last two on course. Well, so that, hurts. There. that hurts indeed. A 300 metre swim, and that's the day done. Maria Clara Dorna, she survives. The only Perio's a little bit further in the pack than she would have liked. And this is, gets dangerous for her now on the bike ride. The same thing applies for this bike section. You have five laps to move up. The last two across the line will be taken out. So the safe place to be is where Emma Jeffcoat in the blue jersey is right now with Yuko Takahashi, Daniela DeFrancesca, there's Lucy. My apologies, that wasn't Erin's story. That was Kim Kilgro of the Philippines and Elena Danilova, I think, of Russia were our two eliminated athletes. Cassandra Bogran and, and Katie Ferris are a lot further back than they need to be. This is the last rider on course, so they're sitting in third and fourth last position, which is a dangerous spot to be in. They definitely need to move up. All right, a tough transition and a tough swim for Clara Dorna. So we'll keep an eye on her at the front. It's Jeff Coat. Takahashi's moved away up as well. Lucy Hall's there, as is Cassandra Bogran, Charlotte McShane. And they're taking this nice and slow through this chicane. This is where Taylor Spivey saw grief early on in the race yesterday. A little bit cooler conditions, I suppose, today. A little more cloud cover here in Singapore, which helps, and a slight breeze as well. 
without question. It seems to be a little a little more humid, though. I, I, I was walking around, I'm swimming a lot more than I was yesterday. Yeah, but it's, it's fairly disgusting here in the commentary box. Thanks, Macca. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel Glamour staying close there in the green jersey. There's Taylor Spivey shadowing the whole move. That's the race we're watching today for the podium positions. But it's Katie Zafaris that needs to move up a little bit, I think. She's with Cassandra Bogrand shadowing her. But they're a little bit further back than they need to be. And I'm looking on screen here, I think there's only two. So number 51 is... Vanessa Del Torre, the Mexican athlete. She was out early yesterday as well. She'll be looking for a better start. She's right on the bubble back there. And the field quite well strung out too as... Unlike the Eliminator, where the front runners can maybe rest easy a little bit, knowing they can make it through to the next stage without being eliminated, there's no room for that here. Jeff Co, Takahashi, Di Francesco, Summer Rappaport, was Summer Cook, if you're just joining us, got married across the Christmas break. Rachel Clammer and Lucy Hall from Taylor Spivey, Charlotte, Charlotte McShane, Laura Lindemann's moved up, Leone Perio. You just saw Katie Zafaris come off that dead turn around the back of the finish line to complete that one and said, and I think she realised I'm a little bit further back than I want to be and this group is starting to escape. It's the furthest back I've ever seen Katie in a race. So she needs to close this gap and move up a little bit because the maths show that as each discipline goes through, you're getting more, there's more chance of you to be eliminated at the back of the field. We need to mention again at the start of this race, which is going to be absolutely brutal, no... We can also see more than two athletes eliminated at the end of each leg depending on if they fall foul of the 90 second rule if they are 90 seconds back at any transition they will be eliminated along with two other athletes if that is indeed what happens so if three come through transition more than 90 seconds back they'll all go as well until we arrive with six if we get down to six athletes out there on course we'll stop the eliminations and it'll be a super six, super six shootout i think yes. is what we wanted to call it exactly at the moment, it's Vanessa Del Toro from Mexico, who's back in that second last position. I haven't quite been able to see who's sitting in last position. Uh, Clara Dorner, I Clara think, Dorner. is last. But Laura Lindemann, I was speaking with her coach this morning at breakfast over at the W Hotel, and she was, uh, she liked this format. And he liked, he said, I can stay up there, it's more, it's a more paced format. I can stay up near the front, try and stay out of trouble. Hope some damage happens behind that I don't have to enforce, and then see how it shoots out in that last swim bike run. There is our last placed athlete, Claire Adorna, who is making her debut in Super League Triathlon and it's finding it, the going a little bit fast just at the moment. The Filipino from gold medalist in the Southeast Asian Games in Singapore 2015, a silver in 2017, both in swimming on seven golds of the 2010 Philippine Games. So she knows how to swim. She didn't have a great one, certainly in that 300 metres. So Zafiris moves us her way up to 12, our championship leader ahead of Hilda Choi. Cassandra Bone Grant, Desiree Reidner and Hoi Long of Macau. Claudia Seabock went out early yesterday as well. The Hungarians she promises so much. A couple of Americans in Aaron Story and Megan Foley will find themselves on the bubble at the end of this bike if it stays the way it is. But right now, it's your bike split leader, Rachel Clammer, who is in a match race. We keep saying that with Taylor Spivey. She was sitting in the second third, Taylor place. Spivey, there, number four on a helmet. So those two will be watching each other very closely because the winner essentially will take second place in the series and 50,000 US dollars and third place 25. So there's 25,000 reasons to beat your opponent in that one. There is Aaron Story at the back of that long train of athletes led now by Emma Jeffcoat who won stage one yesterday, picked up 1,000 US dollars for a trouble, looks in fine form. Has been working very hard over the Christmas break and she's having her best weekend of Super League triathlon. Charlotte McShane looking a lot better than she did yesterday as well. She she said she felt better in the second round, but she was eliminated yesterday. But I think you see how the athletes recover from the day's racing, and some do it better than others. And Charlotte looks a lot better on the bike than she did yesterday, without question. Each of the rounds, she's done better on day yeah. two than in day one, and that's just the, the makeup of her physiology, I suppose, as an athlete and mentally as well. Gets into a weekend's racing and does her best work as they come across the dismount line once more. The crowd building here, despite the heat, great crowd around the start finish line where our vip area is and the kids playground in the background that's where you and i are sitting right now actually in the playground there we are right behind them it's it's this straight that uh if you watch what happens on the race when they come up from this first straight taylor spivey it's the easiest section they're running straight into a headwind there it seems to be a little bit cooler they'll jump around the back of the restaurants there's no wind there at all it's probably the hottest section of the bike course and the run course that is equal and then you get to the chicane and yesterday we saw the chicane is where a lot of the congestion happened so 
what's happening for a lot of these athletes' um, um, heads right now is they're thinking, because of these eliminations, what do I do in this next race? You think of Ashley Jennell, who is weaker in the swim. Does she push this run as she gets off the bike? Give herself a margin of error to ensure that she's protected from that elimination. Yeah, that creeping elimination zone, it comes up very, very quickly as they come through the chicane once again. And a couple of people found grief there, including Taylor Spivey. So the women taking it a little bit more serenely, I suppose, than the men tend to do. It's just so hot along that section. I can't describe it. I well, you did spend you spent the whole week in those restaurants along that section, so I can uh, you your best place to tell us. <laughs> it's it's really really hot. It's nice in the afternoons when I'm spending time there. I avoid it <laughs> like the plague in the day. You can see those marks there on Taylor Spivey's shoulder. That's the one that hit the ground through the chicane yesterday. She leads ahead of Clamour Spivey and Takahashi. You see there is Cody Zafiris. See a lot of the athletes with their swim goggles already down the top of their of their racing suits. That's just to make those transitions a little faster. They know the run's next. It's getting into the water, getting into those positions. What's very, very difficult with this course is moving up. There's only two sections on that hot section we talked about earlier and this straight here that you want to do it. But you can see the intensity between today's racing and yesterday's racing is definitely softer. They're, play, they're pacing this event more than they did yesterday. Taylor Spivey is now in the lead. Two spots up on Rachel Clammer. The two of them need to keep a watch on those. Number four, Spivey and Clammer in the green. And Taylor Spivey leads after a seventh place yesterday, coming back from an accident in the opening stage. Jeff Goat in between those two. Plenty of talent up there, though. Takahashi. Leonie Perry yesterday. Yeah. Perry yesterday was magnificent. She was very, very strong. She raced out of her skin, and she she sits very, very well on a bike, and she seems very, very tactically astute. She's got her eyes on what's happening up ahead. She's about in the sixth or seventh position. You see her in the centre of the screen, just turning now. And she's got Ashley Jenner behind her, who's probably the strongest bike rider on course. Back at Ashley leads from McShane uh, in fourth and fifth position. De Francesco dropped back to six. There is Ash Gentle, Katie Zafiris and Cassandra Bogran, all three of them on our podium yesterday. Big horsepower at the back of that group. Yes, there is. And they, it's, it's hard if you come into the back of a train to that chicane right there, you have to slow up very early as everyone in front of you slows up to make sure they make it through. And by the time you get around to the back of the course here, suddenly the leaders have disappeared off into the distance. I think this is the best place to be, in my opinion. Emma Jeff Coat did what, it at yesterday. The front? At the front. Just, okay. just out of trouble. I think you can pace the race. It's not all out like yesterday's eliminator format. You get to control it. Unless someone's urgently trying to get through, which I don't think anyone's going to go this early, you get to dictate terms. And uh, I think Taylor Spoh is doing a very, very smart piece of racing right now. Lucy Hall and there is Hilda Choi are finding going tough all out on their own. Desiree Ridener gave her all yesterday in the opening stage. Got through to stage two, but she didn't look like she was going to be able to. Megan Foley and Aaron Story, they know how important this is. And as they come across the line, we're going to lose two athletes. Last two off this bike are eliminated from the race. This is a critical run. We saw this in Jersey on both the men's and women's side. The importance of setting up this run as the race starts to unfold after this next swing leg. All right, Hall is off. Ilda Choi is off. Here's our athletes at the back. The yellow flag's going to come out. Desiree Ridener makes it through. Claudia Seabock, Aaron Story and Megan Foley. So here I can see the yellow flag just creeping into screen there. Safe. There's a Mike. Michael Thompson, the dreaded yellow flag. Look at him smiling. He enjoys it. <laughs> he enjoys this. Eliminated. Mean. And Clara Dorner is an eliminated athlete. Coming in behind her. Who's that? Vanessa Del Toro. Ah, oh, Vanessa Del Toro. So yeah. unfortunate for the Mexican and the Filipino. But rounds of applause for their efforts as well, coming from those along the finishing straight. At the front, though, Rachel Clammer, fourth in the Cape Town World Cup a couple of weeks ago. Loves to start a season, had a win in Abu Dhabi last year. You can see them hugging the, the, the left-hand side of the yeah. course, right? It's, it's the shaded area. That right side is, is hot. This is a hot section I was telling you near the restaurants where there's absolutely zero wind. They'll make a right-hand turn here. And they're just trying to get as much shade as they possibly can. The accumulative heat in this race will will heat up. And it, it, it's all about conserving for that last part. We saw in uh, in Jersey the last time we did the enduro format, the, the athletes falling apart in that last triathlon. Taylor Spivey Taylor there. Taylor Spivey there is, is watching Emma Jeffcoat and Rachel Clamber just with a little 
break on the field. You can see coming around the corner there is Charlotte McShane leading the chasing pack with Spivey behind Takahashi. Katie Zafiris has moved up as has Bo Grant, Summer Rappaport, Leone Perio, Ashley Gentle and Laura Lindemann last of all in that group of athletes and they seem to have turned the pace on a little and there's a big gap behind them but at the front it's Rachel Clammer of the Netherlands been training in Africa with her fiance Richard Murray who we know is going to be strong in the men's race again always great as I say early in the season she had a stitch in Cape Town which I'm glad happens to everyone and not just me uh, had a stomach bug as well and managed to end up in fourth 28 year old twice an Olympian Great results yes, uh, last year throughout the WTS and she'd love to start 2019 with a win in the women's enduro. Emma Jeffcoat, we said, as we said yesterday, just her, her swim's always been strong, but I'm impressed with what her the rest of her race looks like uh, in this one as yeah. opposed to the end of last year. Oh, without question, she's a completely different athlete than she was in Malta and Majorca and uh, she dominated the early round, early stages yesterday. She looks magnificent today. And it's an interesting tactic from, from Rachel Klammer. She needs to control her emotions a little bit. You've got a, a lot of running power in that group behind with Cassandra Beaugrand. You've got Ashley Gentle there. You've got Katie Zafaris. You need to control those emotions. It's, it's, it's going to be difficult to try and run away from them this early. And, uh, you know, it's, it's probably a safer play, which is what they seem to be doing now in, in moving back in this group and, and safety and playing safety in numbers. It is a long, long race, the enduro. Swim, bike, run. Swim, bike, run. Swim, bike, run. And it just keeps going. No breaks whatsoever. Eight transitions, nine legs. And if you're just joining us, two eliminated at the end of each leg of racing. So as we come around for the first lap of the first run, one more lap and we'll find two more to go. Laura Lindemann's dropped off the back of that group, the German, the 22-year-old. She comes back to racing after missing the rest of, well, all of this season. She was there in Jersey in 2017, but she hasn't tasted Super League since then. And the pace in each round has risen as athletes have learned how to get the most out of their bodies in this format. Charlotte McShane also started to yo-yo off the back of that group and that's a dangerous position to be in. It gives you a lot of work to do in the next discipline and if you find yourself alone, that's probably the worst position you could be in in a race like this with the draft legal bike ride. You want to work with others in the race and if you find yourself solo, you suddenly come up for the possibility of elimination. So Rachel Clammer alongside Ashley Gentle who has spent her weekend thus far chasing and now she sits at the front of the pack which is a much more comfortable position for the Australian who has had such great results in 2018 Summer Rappaport has moved her way up too, she has been in and out of the red run splits jersey, she's such a good runner, she's worked a lot on her technical bike skills and she's needed all of that work on this course 900 metres with plenty of twists and turns and narrow sections Cassandra Beaugrand has, you can see her on the left of screen there, behind Gentle, probably the best runner in triathlon, although she was out round by Katie Zafiris yesterday, and Emma Jeffcoat in the blue on the right, the Australian, has some great World Cup wins towards the end of 2018 as well, and there is Leonie Perio as well, who was a little bit further back, but has made sure she's joining this front group. She's Emma Jeffcoat, we, we've talked about her earlier, but to be I think for herself, she'd be very proud of herself. To be running in this company, she's around as a big swim biker. She's been used a lot by the Australian team to close a lot of gaps in these teams' races in the World Championship Series. But she's a runner now, and she's sitting with the best runners in the sport and dictating terms. Laura Lindemann. She struggled a little bit yesterday in the heat. She needs to close up a little bit if she can, but I don't think that's going to happen. And you can see her looking across there yeah. and watching them disappear around the corner. Uh, that's the W Hotel there in the background. and. When you see the W Hotel, you know they're in the back part of the course and they're on the tarmac or the grass, depending if you're Leo Berger, who didn't run in his shoes yesterday and so ran along the grass when he could. Something different. Super League just throwing up all kinds of variables. But there is your lead group. Rachel Clammer, the Dutch woman, in the green. Ashley Gentle, the Australian in the middle. Summer Rappaport, number 99. I'm trying to look for Taylor Spivey. She, oh, she's at the back there. Rappaport currently in sixth position, equal with Jody Simpson, who isn't here, so effectively in fifth position, behind Spivey, Clammer, Kirsten Casper, who's not here, and Katie Zafiris is our championship leader as they... And there's Summer Cook getting her goggles, goggles out. On. Yep. Already getting ready to get back into the water once again. Every athlete I've spoken to who tackled the eliminator yesterday said everything was fine until they had to get into the water for the second time. 
and it was 29 degrees and they and that was where people realized that they were right up against it and they're about to hop into the water for the second time but this time there is no 10 minute break they're straight in and they're straight in so the goggles go on the caps go on this is such a tough format such a tough format this is when the this is when you start to feel it the diving in for a swim after a tough run like this is got to be the hardest thing you can possibly do. The, all the blood is in the all the blood's in the legs. You need to move it to the arms to, to get swimming quickly. Your head's underwater, so if you need air, it's, it's you've got to get it out and, and get it. It's uh, it's so hard. If you haven't done it, go and try it in training. It's very very difficult. No, I'll take your word for it. I don't want to try it. This shows you how Super League has evolved. In that when we started doing this, no one was putting their goggles and cap on as they were running and then realising that they had to do it all of a sudden. And we've seen the refinement in transitions. They've just got quicker and quicker and quicker in transitions. And look, Rachel Clammer straight out. What a transition that was. It just shows you this pace as we head towards Tokyo 2020, sprint distance and a mixed team relay. And this is where those little one percenters are refined, reformed and put into action by a lot of these athletes will be in the Olympics next year in Tokyo in similar conditions as well as they head into the water for the second time. So one triathlon done, two triathlons to go. Rachel Clammer is our leader. Look for Emma Jeffcoat to have a big swim here as well. As Charlotte McShane really needs to run as quickly as she can down this ramp and get straight on the back of Yuko Takahashi's feet. She's giving herself a lot to do. Same with Laura Lindemann. It's much easier to be in that swim group in front where they're moving the water forward, sitting in drafting, being alone with the, with the type of swim power in this front group. There's Yuko Takahashi jumping on the back. This does not look fun at all. But off they go and at a nice clip too, into the water for the second time. Just a reminder, there's double championship points on offer for this weekend. So in terms of round points, you can get 25 maximum yesterday, 25 maximum today. And your score out of 50 gives you a ranking for the weekend. So our, our weekend winner, our round winner, will take home 20,000 US dollars. But that ranking usually gives you a maximum of 25 championship points to take forward. This weekend, they'll take 50 championship points. So 40% of the points on offer across the season are to be decided today here in Singapore. Katie Zafir is your championship leader, 31 points ahead. And the yellow flag. Rachel Clammer, Taylor Spivey. Here goes the eliminated flag again. And eliminated is Megan Foley of the US. 26-year-old from Salt Lake City has put everything she can into it. Four-year Division One college swimmer. What you start to see in this second swim is where the swimmers come to fruition. It's good technique, good ability to float in the water, and technique matters when you're tired. And it's the, the learned swimmers, or the runners, we used to call them back in my day, the learned swimmers that, are, that tend to struggle in this second and third swim. And if you look across the screen now, they're all seasoned swimmers leading this. Their technique's magnificent. They float well in the water, and they just tend to move up when they're tired in the water. You can't replicate a childhood spend in the water. Believe me, I'm trying to learn how to swim properly myself. Getting technique training, it is horrible. Not fun. Emma Jeffcoat, though, she's been doing it a long time. She's got a surf life-saving background. So she's used to water choppier than this. It's uh, practically uh, still out there. Ashley Gentle just starting to drift off the back. And I wonder if that's a force pace by Summer Rappaport. She's on the front. This is, she's a magnificent swimmer, Summer. A magnificent runner. But with Emma Jeffcoat, it's not as quick as it can be. We tend to see quick races when they single file it out. But she's definitely putting a lot of effort in to distance herself from the women at the back of this field. And put them in danger of being eliminated. Establishing a front group in this next bike ride makes things a lot easier as you start to fatigue. If the pace is pushed by our front runners, we saw the gaps here. You can see at the top of your screen, athletes just heading out on their swim. The 90-second rule could start to come into effect. We're only on the fourth of nine legs here. Anytime through transition, athletes come in 90 seconds behind our leaders. They will be eliminated along with, if they are not part of, the two that already are going to be eliminated. So we could see big chunks of our field disappearing as this race progresses. See Emma Jeffcoat was just sitting off the hip of Summer Rappaport there, which is the easiest place for Emma to be in, but makes it very, very difficult to swim if you're Summer. It slows things up. She's now slid to the back behind her feet and will keep the pace a little bit quicker. Summer would be relieved about that. Can set up a transition now and again, we're going to look what's happening at the back of the pack. Well, I think if they don't look up, we're going to yeah. hit the side of the pontoon. <laughs> Someone's going to. Fogged goggles. Those humid, foggy goggles make it difficult to see. 
All right, the pace certainly on. They're strung out nearly single file, at least through the first part, and then out the back. There's a pack of about 10, perhaps, and then a couple straggling to try and close that gap, and we'll see who can manage it out of the water. There's a mat under the water there. You can see yesterday we didn't have that. It was very slippery, but Summer, Summer Rappaport hops up. Gemma Jeffcoat there as well. Clamour and Zephyrus ahead of Spivey. Terio Takahashi. Bo Cassandra Bogrand. And what a great swim by Charlotte McShane. Absolutely. She's back into that pack. swim by Charlotte McShane. This is Ashley Gentle. She'll do her best to bridge straight across as she can. And Laura Lindemann had a great swim as well to swim on yes. the back of Ashley. She wants to get to Ashley Gentle's wheel on the bike because you know one thing, Ashley will work until she gets onto this back of this group. And this is where the racing starts to start in the enduro format. This next bike ride is where the fatigue is starting to settle in. You're thinking, wow, I've done a lot of work. It's getting hot. I've got another swim bike and run to do. Another run after this. It's, uh, this is where it all starts to happen. So a bunch of athletes coming out there at the same time. Clamour, Perio, Takahashi, Spivey. A little bit further back, Cassandra Bogran, who didn't look too rushed. And we've had a problem there. Laura Lindemann, what fell out of it? Like was it Innisol? Innisol, yes. So that shouldn't hurt her too much. She's done a lot of work to get onto the back, as you say, of Ash Gentle, but she comes out of there eight seconds back. So she had a little bit of trouble there in transition. Not a quick one because yeah. she was only a couple of seconds out of the water. Daniel Di Further back, yep, Di Francesco, who's holding on in 12th position, but a long way back now. We'll see the times as they go through transition and how close they're getting towards that 90 seconds. Some of these athletes at the back here. Hilda Choi out of the water. Hong Kong, already had a couple of races in 2019. 74 ITU starts, the 24-year-old, so she's very, very experienced, especially in these conditions. Starting to get in the danger zone now. We're getting the time's ticking away. In 90 seconds, they'll be eliminated. But they're also in that position where the last two are in, they're taken out of the race. So we're going to see some eliminations right now as now, they head out on the bike. They're already at the back end of the course and coming back around. And now with Katie on the front, it's more likely to happen. This is where she really comes into her own. Now, this is where her strength is a strength, and she starts to get stronger and stronger. It's tight, it's a screw, tightens it, winds it up, and already a small group have got away. In that group, Katie Zafiris, Emma Jeffcoat sitting in second ahead of Leone Perio, who keeps moving up. Rachel Clammer there as well. Takahashi is there. It's Taylor Spivey. The back, yes, yeah, Spivey and, and Bogran, who are both huge threats in this Super League Triathlon Championship and in the round. As they come around for the first of five bike laps once again, and Aaron Story has been showing the yellow flag, the American who's been great and improved throughout. This Super League Championship, 27-year-old. She's one who's been a competitive swimmer since an early age. And she's been a great addition to our championship, but her time in this championship is now done. Zephyrus, Jeffcoat and Perio are your three in a group of, I think, eight. Seven, perhaps, at the back is Cassandra Bogran. This is, should be Ashley Gentle coming around next, who really needs to ride up onto this group. And I think they start to be aware of, of who, possess, who possesses a danger to the, to the overall now. And with Ashley Gentle trying to get across, they want to keep her away out of this next run. She's probably one of the quickest runners on course and uh, make her do a lot more work than she needs to do going into this next swim. So in that group is Clamour and Spivey. So that match race continues, but at the head of it is Katie Zafiris, who needs to finish the whole round seventh or lower. Sorry, eighth or lower. Michelle McShane there. If she finishes seventh or higher, she will ensure her victory in the championship. At the moment, she won yesterday and she's leading today, so I don't see how that's going to have it barring some kind of mishap. And we're about to see a lapped athlete in Claudia Seabock. You can see there at the front of your screen, she'll be lapped and eliminated from the race. That's, hopefully she moves to the side and lets this trade through if that is indeed what happens. Day's over. Zafiris, Jeffcoat, Perio, Clamart, Rappaport, Takahashi, Spivey. And Hilda the end Choi. of the day for Hilda Choi from Hong Kong. Making her Super League debut this weekend here in Singapore in the grand final. And also held is Claudia Seabock, the Hungarian. Qualified through Poznan, got the last spot available yeah. in the Poznan qualifier. The 21-year-old, who's second in the sprint 
national champions in Hungary last year, former national junior champion as well. She's got a big career ahead of her and her learning curve in Super League has been immense. You see the energy gel hanging out yeah. of Rachel Clammer's mouth. This is She looks so focused today, Rachel Clammer. She stayed up near the front all race. She seems to be thinking things through. You saw her in the swim straight on Emma Jeffcoat's feet. She's very, very aware Taylor Spivey's moving up. She seems to be very, very aware of where everybody is today. All right, two athletes eliminated from the swim, two athletes eliminated thanks to the 90-second rule, and suddenly we are starting to lose some numbers, but at the front, all is progressing on point for Katie Zafiris, Rachel Clammer, and Taylor Spivey, our championship contenders, and they've got a lot of class between them as well, and where they finish in this group, if indeed no one else joins them, will be incredibly important in terms of the championship overall. Not forgetting that there is 20,000 US dollars on offer for the round win. Zafiris taking on some electrolytes. It's very, very hot here in Singapore. And when it comes to Super League, this is as long a race as you can do. The cap and goggles tucked in for the next time they hit the water after the run. So Rachel Clammer have a big look back to count who was in that group. And uh, I think she was looking for both Charlotte McShane and, and Ashley Gentle. She knows we've got a big run coming up. Both women are, are very capable runners. And you start to do the math. You think, I'm more comfortable with seven or eight. And there's the two she was looking for right there. And Laura Lindemann's been solo for this entire bike ride. And that was a problem from that first run. She gave that gap up in the first run, wasn't able to close the gap in the swim. And it makes for a difficult day. And as those eliminated athletes start to go, we lost four in the last round, suddenly you find yourself last and you're gone. It's hard to keep an eye on exactly how many people are behind you on this course too. Not a lot of corners, only one through transition where you can get a bit of a look. There is your top six on the fourth lap of five in the second of three bike legs. Bogran and Rappaport, so eight riders out there at the moment. And if... Just getting an update on Danielle DiFrancesco, who has made it through to the second bike, which is good work from her. She would be happy with that. I spoke to her this morning, as I said. But they're, they're moving quite quick. They'll be, they'll be moving rapidly in on Danielle DiFrancesco right now. Yeah, she's right on the bubble of the 90-second rule, so she is flirting with being eliminated. And for her, sitting in 13th in the championship, every single point counts when it comes to the top 10 getting contracts, which are incredibly lucrative for... And there is your chase group, actually. Ash Gentle and Charlotte McShane by themselves. Now, Ashley Gentle, who finished third yesterday, is 14th overall. So a good result here could catapult her into the top 10, you'd think. And Charlotte McShane is in eighth. No, uh, ninth, sorry, on the bubble with Cassandra Bogran, who's up in this front pack. So contracts on the line for our top 10 to go through on championship points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The others will have to qualify through our three qualifiers of details of which you can find on superleagetriathlon.com. And there is Ash General, and there is yes, Danielle, Danielle DeFrancesco, who makes it through to the second bike, but is eliminated midway through on the time rule. So we've lost five athletes in short order. DeFrancesco had a good bike yesterday in the opening stage, but found some grief with an accident. Very sore, she says he had about three hours sleep last night, which is not enough to cope with these conditions. Summer Rappaport's been on the back of that group. It's both Summer and Cassandra both been sitting there. I think Cassandra's done it out of choice. Summer's been forced back there. Emma Jeffcoat's played a really smart game. She's probably led 50% of this bike course. And Katie Zafaris has just sat off her. Emma just loves to be in that position on the front. Katie just looks so controlled. And I'm, I'm impressed with both Rachel and, Spiv and Taylor Spivey. We've just been shadowing each other, looking looking for a moment's opportunity to, to, take, a, to take the other one over. Just two points between Rachel Clammer and Taylor Spivey. And whoever wins this race, you'd think... It's $50,000. Will win $50,000. Yeah. And that is... I mean, I know how much some of these people make, and $50,000 is not an insignificant sum. Well, for anyone, really, but for a triathlete, absolutely. It's a, it's a good amount of money, and that's what we want to offer people in Super League Triathlon. There's Ash Gentle and Charlotte McShane, who are stuck to each other like glue as they try to work together to bridge this gap back to the top eight. There, effectively, is your top ten, ninth and tenth. But, you know, Ash Gentle is one who improves across the course of a weekend, as is Charlotte McShane, and across the course of a race as well, so... It's Laura Lindemann from Germany. She, she is the third group. Yes. 
it's and I'm, I'm interested to know who's behind her because this is going to have be a massive wreck next run we it's the bell lap they get off the bike now it's a massive two lap run and it's, it's lucy hall i think that's just behind laura lindemann on her own but as we get into this transition this is the run that matters ashley general needs to run back up she's probably given them 10 or 15 seconds and these women here need to keep this group as tight together as they possibly can or start to make their moves. Some high quality runners amongst them as well. Absolutely. Some rapport coming in in eight. She is one of the best runners in triathlon. We know Bo Grant is. We know Zafiris is. We know Klammer can run. Oh, We've seen Jeff Coe can run. And Spivey is quick on her feet as well. She's had a good transition there. And here's Ashley Jenner and Charlotte McShane. Probably about 10 seconds, 15 seconds back. But she's Rachel Klammer again, quick through transition. Everything seems to be sparky with Rachel Klammer today. She knows a lot's on the line. And she seems to have that, I want this face on. She's, she's been magnificent. All right, the two Australians come out together as they have been across the course of the bike. And a little move there from Klammer and Jeff Coat have just gapped Katie Zafiris and Laura Lindemann. Well, her day and her weekend is over as well, the German. Well, they're the last two off the bike. So Laura Lindemann and Lucy Hall, I think, have been eliminated, not knowing that others have been eliminated on time. They found themselves at the back of the race and gone. Last two are done. Now it's Yuko Takahashi at the back that may be eliminated in this run league. So are we down then to 10? We're down to 10, but two go now. So Yuko Takahashi has dropped off the back, has now put herself in a position to be eliminated and one from this group. Ashley Gentle oh no, he's got Charlotte, Charlotte McShane behind. and Ashley Gentle. And also eliminated is Lucy Hall coming back after a tough 2018 with illness and injury. So Laura Lindemann, number five, number 92, Lucy Hall, gets some congratulations from the crowd. And Yuko Takahashi now is finally in the going tough. The Japanese, only Asian athlete who races the whole SLT circuit. A lot of support for Yuko Takahashi this weekend. In the silver transition jersey, the fastest in transition from the last round. Asian champion 2017 and 18. Former duathlon national champion as well. So we are on to the sixth discipline and the cream of the crop remain here in the women's enduro. Ten athletes left. We have lost 13. Rachel Klammer, Katie Zafiris, Emma Jeffcoat, Summer Rappaport, Cassandra Bogran and Leonie Perio are your lead group as it stands. That is six athletes. We will arrive at a Super 6, you would have thought, and it could be these six. When, when, yeah, when you... When you do the math, you've got Gentle and McShane at the back here. Two are going to go in this in this run. Yuko Takahashi's just dropped. Ashley Gentle has to run across to Yuko Takahashi, which means Charlotte McShane and Takahashi will be eliminated after this run. But then Ashley Gentle is all on her own. Is all on her own. Well, swim or McShane or, or Takahashi. McShane. Let's not be biased. No, you're going to lose two now. So I'm, I'm yeah, but which one is which two are they going to be? I, I, you're assuming it's going to be Charlotte McShane and Yuko Takahashi. Well, from <laughs> I, it's I think, a fair assumption. It's She's a fair assumption. Run, I think Ashley Gentle. Gentle's running through, as you can see. You'll see Yuko Takahashi's going backwards. There you're back three. So two of these are going. I think Ashley Gentle's got her eyes on Yuko Takahashi, but all she's doing is saving herself for an extra swim. We don't just... necessarily know that Ashley Gentle knows that she's in the bottom three, or McShane. Exactly, she wouldn't. Actually, she wouldn't know. But she knows she's got to put as many people as she can behind her yeah. to survive in this race as the top but... seven athletes. There is there seven? Yes, there is. Sorry, I thought there was six. There is, in fact, seven athletes in that lead group, of which Emma Jeffcoat is now at the back. So this is going to be a swim for Emma Jeffcoat's life, really, because one of them are going after the swim. But really, it's uh, this is the whole purpose of the enduro format. By eliminating it at the back, it encourages pace up the front. You have to keep pushing forward. You can't drift back. You have to be tactically aware of where everybody else is. You have to manage your effort to make sure you're able to, to kick it with the event, but stay out of danger. It's a brutal format, a brutal format. Now, well, it's your fault. You made it up. And these fine athletes are experiencing it. And Emma Jeffcoat will know that she needs, you're right, to make the most of this swim because the pace is very hot out there. There is Takahashi, and I think actually Jen was overtaking her because that is Charlotte McShane in the background, who is now our 10th athlete in this race. But she's not seeing a yellow. Oh, that is right, there is one more left to go, even I'm getting confused. There is our front runners. And there's a little gap back now to Emma Jeffcoat. You can just see her in the background there behind Cassandra Bogran. With Summer Rappaport, number 99. 
fifth overall in the championship. A big points haul here would help her very much in terms of final positions. And Rachel Clammer and Taylor Spivey are stuck together like glue. Taylor's really followed Rachel all day. Rachel's been aware of every, everyone that's going around her. Taylor's sort of stuck off the back of Katie Zaferi's going, if anybody's going to be near the front, it's going to be her. And it's the first time I've seen her run with a bit of purpose. She's moved right up. She knows this is a business end. She's got a fantastic swim on her. Has to be careful of the elimination, so getting in that water first is critical. Transitions are key. And this is really the business end now. Trying to pick the weakest swimmer here is, uh, you know, their, their distance is Emma Jeffcoat. They know she's got a big swim, so they've forced this run. There's a bit of distance, and it's left Emma with a lot to do. Ashley General in the background with a big run. Very big run. Yeah, she's put a lot of distance into Yuko Takahashi and Charlotte McShane, who are still out there and trying to avoid being in the bottom two. But at this point, you'd have to say it might be the end of the race for them at six of the nine disciplines as they go through the chicane once again. And Ashley Gentle has a look across to see where her opponents are. And Yuko Takahashi is laboring somewhat along with Charlotte McShane and they're still putting time into Emma Jeffcoat as Rachel Clammer decides to put the hammer down a little bit more and we're up to a, a group of six as they come across the back end of the course on the tarmac under the trees for a little bit of blessed shade. And there is Charlotte McShane who looks down that long stretch of tarmac and sees Yuko Takahashi. I'm not sure whether she knows at this point that passing Takahashi will not help her avoid being eliminated. But she'll aim for that no matter what. Clamour though at the front and behind her that familiar running style of Katie Zafiris as Summer Rappaport again the first to get the goggles out of the swimmers and pop them on. Emma Jeffcoat has a big swim, she knows that. Ashley Gentle we be trying to get as close to Emma Jeffcoat as she possibly can, going into the water and probably use her feet to knowing if anyone's going to go forward, it's going to be Emma Jeffco to potentially get on the back of that group and save the elimination in this next swim because we're going to lose Charlotte McShane and Yuko Takahashi now. Last two across the line in this run leg. Same applies for the next swim leg. So six at the front. Rachel Clammer, Summer Rappaport, Cassandra Beaugrant, Katie Zafiris, Leonie Perio, so two French women, two Americans. Clamour, the Dutch woman at the front, and at the back of that group is Taylor Spivey, a third American. So I wouldn't expect them to work together too much though. It's every woman for herself at this point. Jeff Coat and Gentle, the two Australians chasing. Seventh and eighth going into this swim. So the next two are eliminated. That's tenth and ninth. Yeah, there's the flag. Is, here it comes. No, I don't. It gives me shivers just looking at it. After all that work to be shown the elimination flag. But nevertheless, we carry on. Last time into the water. Last of three back-to-back -back triathlons. Unique to Super League, this format, as they all are. And a true test of your transitions and of your speed and endurance as Yuko Takahashi of Japan and Charlotte McShane of Australia both get a blessed rest. They wouldn't have liked that, but they've done incredibly well. Summer Rappaport just runs a little bit further along than she maybe had to. It's a straighter line to the boy in the centre yep. of the transition area, the centre of the pontoon. So maybe... So these six, this is our super six. If they stay together, they cannot be eliminated. You can only lose two more. We have to finish with six. And at the moment, that's Emma Jeffcoat and Ashley General who will be the last two into the water. They go in now. Emma Jeffcoat, a magnificent swimmer in our blue swimmer's jersey. If anybody can swim up, it is her. But it has to be a big, big swim. She's swimming for a life now. 50 metres, you think that she'd have to cover of a 300 metre swim. And there are some high quality swimmers in this group. I'm not sure who's at the back there. Perhaps it's Leone Perio. On paper, she's the weakest swimmer, Leone Perio, but it's a great position to be in with six feet to follow. The water's moving forward. She can get clear water around the swim boys. Sometimes it's a little easier in a smaller group. But there's some serious swimming horsepower. It really Summer is. Rappaport all day has been magnificent leading the swims. So Summer Rappaport leads. Rachel Clammer there on the rider screen in the green. Alongside her, I think that might be Taylor Spivey. 
I just assume it is. No, it's Cardi Zafira soaring our championship leader in the pink. Taylor's probably sitting right on her hip. That's the best place to be to conserve your energy. It's terrible for Katie Zafira, but for Rachel Clammer, you just, you just get towed. So Summer Rappaport, if you are just joining us, used to be Summer Cook, got engaged and married over... Well, I don't know when she got engaged. She got married over the Christmas break. Yeah. Maybe it was that quick. Maybe it wasn't. I'm not sure. Former runner from Villanova. Worked so hard on her bike leg. And it's paying dividends here in the Enduro. She was sitting in the second position overall in the series until the last round in Majorca where she really struggled on the big climb. So she definitely has the pedigree to win a round, to win an event like this. And to really upset these top six. And she seems to be racing with a lot more purpose than we saw. She seems more comfortable on this course than she did in Majorca in the last round. Yep. And she dived in the water, saw her run wide on the pontoon. Confidence, and there's your six. There's our whole field, the six at the front. Emma Jeffcoat Jeff rounding the second boy. Ashley Gentle rounding the first boy. Probably a bridge too far for maybe both of them. And there is Ashley Gentle in the water. She's about to turn for home. And 150 metres between her and elimination, you would think. Summer Rappaport at the front. Continuing on her way. She had a podium in Cape Town a couple of weeks ago despite a stomach bug that had her only eating rice for a few days and a couple of bananas. So she said it helped her race without anxiety and worry because she wasn't expecting anything. And off she went in her first race as a Rappaport onto the podium. No doubt a big boost for her mentally at the start of 2019. And she's showing that she can continue that form here in the very warm waters of Singapore. Katie Zafira sitting on her feet knowing she just has to finish in this group and she will be our Super League champion. Behind her, Taylor Spivey, Leonie Perio in that group with Cassandra Beaugrand, the two French women. Grant's either tactically opted to sit at the back there or is, is a little fatigued. She's just sat off the back all day. She didn't. She hasn't forced anything. We saw yesterday she was very, very eager to be at the front and force her hand, but today she's just sat off the back. I don't know whether it's fatigue, it's a tactical decision, but we're going to find out now because this is the business end. Summer Rappaport has a beautiful open water swim technique. Massive catch. Very, very swim straight lines. Just nailed that to perfection. If it's 300, 300 meter swim, she swam 300 meters. She didn't go an inch too far, inch further than she had to. Maybe Port, there. Zafiris and Spivey, three Americans. Leone Perio, Rachel Clammer, and Cassandra Bogra are your super six. These six will race through to the end. Two yes, more so. disciplines to go. No one else can be eliminated except for the two last two out of the water now, but these six on the front are safe. Emma Jeffcoat will be eliminated. Fantastic race from her, though. And Ashley Jenner will be eliminated as well. And there is the yellow flag at the bottom of your screen. I don't think she was aware. She's asking a few questions of the race of Michael Thompson, the race referee. I'm at the back, yes. And there's Ashley Jenner. Third yesterday. Didn't realise she was at the back. That's what happens when the 90-second rule comes into effect. It's not just two... At each discipline, it can be more, so race awareness is key, and there's not a lot of places to see the rest of your opponents around this course. But the two Australians share a moment. They train together, those two. They've been in New Zealand preparing for the WTS season, and Olympic representation for Australia. Good friends. Super six time, two disciplines to go. Five laps on the bike, two laps on the run, and your women's enduro and championship winners will be decided. Two French women, three Americans, and a Dutch wild card in Rachel Klammer. And those two, Rachel Klammer and Taylor Spivey at the back of the group. For the first time, I've since the furthest back I've seen Rachel Klammer all day. And this is when fatigue really starts to come in. You think you're, you're on your eighth, eighth discipline, as you said. It's, it, you're tired, it's really, really hot. You're thinking about the run that's about to come. It might only be two kilometres, but it's a long, hot two kilometres. And you've just got to stay as close in this group as you possibly can and save as much as you possibly can for this run. A little bit of water on board for Perio and for Spivey as they head down the back of the course for the first of five times. And they couldn't be closer, Clamour and Spivey. We're really enjoying this race between these two. We keep saying it, but it's for $50,000. Effectively, whoever wins this race between the two of them should launch themselves into second position overall in the championship and a 50,000 US dollar payday but that 
woman in pink at the front there, Cardi Zafiris. She led eight of the nine legs of the Enduro in Jersey. And a little bit slower to make her way to the front this time around. But she's here when it matters. And she could take out the championship with a perfect race weekend of two wins and 50 points. If indeed she can hold off the likes of Rappaport, Perio, Bogran, Clamour and Spivey and win today to add to her eliminator win yesterday. The French have been magnificent on both days. They're tactically and technically magnificent on the swim by hand run. They sit well on a bike. Gloria Perio in particular. Taylor Spivey looks a little tired. The American on the back. But she's so so slight in the frame. She just seems to sneak through this, this chicane right here. Come straight back onto the group and get a ride along the whole back section of this bike course, which is exactly the way you want to race this. Save the legs for the big run. 1,800 metre run to come after this. Two laps around this 900 metre course. And all of the biscuits will be decided. 1.5 million US dollars on the line, and it'll be dealt out to our championship and round winners here. And again, in the men's enduro later on, the temperature just starting to slowly drop. They get the best of the conditions. The men racing second both times this race weekend. Doesn't always work out that way. That's a better position for Taylor Spivey. She's watching, she's watching Rachel Clamour and assuming that Rachel's on game. Sometimes you, you, you spend your whole time watching the athlete that you're supposed to be watching and you think, hang on a second, and the race moves, moves up. And I think... It's the first time I've seen Rachel Clammer not dictating terms in this race. Whether that's a tactical decision, I don't know, but she seemed to be a lot further back now. And now Summer Cook has been, Summer Rappaport that's been pushed to the back. Because this woman on screen right now, Kate, as far as just keeps winding it up, winding it up. You see out of every turn, those gaps open. It stings the legs as you have to, the Constantina effect as the, as the peloton opens up, comes back together, and it's very, very difficult to be on the back in, those, in that situation. Of all six of these athletes, you'd have to say Summer Rappaport as the... I guess the most work to do, she's got a, she's very tall and she um, has had an ongoing journey, I suppose, with her technical bike skills. But she seems to be, the good thing with Summer in this race is she's stayed in this front group and she's had, she has worn yeah. the red jersey in the Super League Series. She has a big run on her and I'm thinking she'll grab more and more confidence as she gets closer to the end of this bike ride. She does put a tendency to drift back and leave a lot of work to do as she has, she's always last at a transition, but... She has such a big run, she could run herself into the win or into the podium. Certainly hope so. She's been very strong and very consistent across the course of Super League Triathlon and a great addition to the series, no doubt. At the moment, she's sitting in sixth position as we head out around the back of the course one more time. Taylor spivey has gone straight to the front. So I stand corrected. I said she looked a little tired. Straight to the front to prove me wrong. And that's the place she wants to be. And look at Rachel Clamour. That's the two. The Rachel in green, Taylor Spivey in the front are racing for second and third position. In the overall championship. What a race, though, and what a, a masterful lesson in positioning from Katie Zafiris, who always feels like the race revolves around where Katie is, and all the other women are looking to, to where Katie is and maybe not attacking and just really waiting a little bit too long and allow Cady Zafiris over the course of nine legs to position herself perfectly and, and run away to a win. And that's happened so many times across the course of this season. If you watch Cady Zafiris on this course in particular, I saw it yesterday, I saw it earlier in the race, I was going to comment, she's the only woman that glances across on this section to see who's in the group. She seems very, very aware of where everybody is on course. A lot of the other athletes just tend to be focusing on the athletes around them. Cady is always counting heads, always looking around. She's so tactically astute. And she races with so much purpose. That's what makes her so marvellous as an athlete. She continually dictates terms and ultimately wins races. Absolutely right. She does win a lot of races. That's why she's our championship leader. And in fact, our top three in the championship, our three contenders for the top spot are in the top three in this race. Exactly how we would like to see this pan out. The two French women and Summer Rappaport are chasing them. But Taylor Spivey, third in terms of our current athletes who are on top of the ladder. Without Kirsten Casper there, Rachel Clammer second, and Katie Zafiris on top. But all of these athletes will be, you'd think, contracted again in 2019 and 20. Although, Leonie Perio finds herself quite a way down the leaderboard. 
this big result and yesterday could catapult her up into contract position. Yeah. She's, had, she's had a big weekend of racing, Leone. She she hasn't really shown. She, she showed some glimmers of hope in, in Jersey. She struggled elsewhere, but this weekend she's been marvellous. I'm interested to see Cassandra Bogran on this run. She's considered... We saw it yesterday, but she's considered in the triathlon world the best runner, the biggest talent in the, in the world of triathlon right now, one of the favourites to win the Tokyo Olympics. She's a superstar. She was outrun yesterday by Katie Seferis, fair and square, and uh, all day today she's just sat off the back so tactically, whether that's a tactical decision or a fatigue decision, I, I'm yet to see, but it's going to come down to this next run as they come into the bell lap. All right, one more lap on the bike, two laps on the run, and the season will be done. And our champion crown here at Super League Triathlon Singapore, the grand final, the culmination of four amazing rounds from September in Jersey to Malta to Mallorca and now to one degree north of the equator here in Singapore. 32 degrees in the air, 29 degrees in the water, that's Celsius, so that means it is hot. And you can see that these athletes have arrived here in peak condition after tough off seasons. Taylor Spivey has been training in Spain. Katie Zafira spending time at home in the US. Rachel Klammer training in Africa, so she's used to the heat. Mario Bogran and Summer Rappaport, RR6. Last lap on the bike, a good transition will be key. You've got to start thinking of position now. If, you, if you're thinking it, if you. If you're thinking of winning this race, you've got to move up. You've got to get a quick transition. You don't want to give seconds away when it matters. Everybody's fatigued. Everybody's tired. To make two seconds up over two kilometres is very, very difficult to do. So you need to move up. And ta Taylor Spivey needs to beat Rachel Clamber in the green in the green jersey there by two places. If she beats her by two places, she passes her in the overall championship. No, that's for the round. Oh, for the round. The championship is different. Championship so is different. Fifth yesterday for Rachel Clamber, seventh for Taylor Spivey. We'll equal the so, points and we'll go to round points. Yeah, they will end up on equal points, but the Sunday result is will what decide matters. who comes through in terms of our round podium. The Taylor. championship is different. Well, Taylor's very aware. She moves straight in the front. She's first, and this is the place to be. Clemmer racing by Taylor Spivey. Rachel Clemmer in third. The French at the back. Summer around the port, who's probably got one of the biggest runs here. Again, last off the bike. Leads Certainly a helpful to spot to be number one for Taylor Spivey. She was very happy when she ended up in transition spot one, thanks out. to our slot draw, and she'll go first out. So as it stands, if it's like this, Taylor Spivey will Clamours out. take second. Bograns out. But our top three championship contenders are one, two and three out of transition for the final time. If it stays like this, Katie Zafiris will be our champion. And then I think Taylor Spivey might overtake Rachel Clamour and take the $50,000. If she can stay ahead of Clamour, she will also take second in the round if she can keep Katie Zafiris between them. Wow. What a run. So there is a lot on the line for Taylor Spivey, and she knows it. Tough day yesterday, came off the bike the first time through the chicane in stage one of the Eliminator. But she has bounced back, she stayed in it, she finished top ten. And now she's looking for a win, but Katie Zafiris is right on her. And there's Cassandra Bogran, who's eased away past Rachel Klammer. And Klammer to looks to be a little fatigued. right in the red zone there. But it was a big statement by Taylor Spivey to, to get into transition first, to get out first, to really dictate that first two or 300 metres of the run. And sometimes you can bluff it. You see, everyone else says, oh, she's a lot better than I am, a lot fitter, fresher, I'm out, I'm happy with fourth. But... Or is Clamour just pace that? Okay. Katie's moves. Katie's moves straight to the front again. She's dictated. And there's there's Summer, Summer Rappaport at the back. Zafiris now leads this one. She's put the hammer down and it's 1-2 with her and Cassandra Bogran. Exactly like it was yesterday, these two. We named them as the present and the future of sprint level triathlon and it's showing to be exactly the same today. Bogran obviously. Cassandra looks very, very good, very comfortable. She hasn't panicked at all. She yeah. sat back all day. We wondered whether that was a fatigue thing or a tactical thing. She hasn't rushed to get back up onto Katie's shoulder. She's eased her way up. 
Leone Perry at the back there. Speaking of easing their way up, Spivey, who came out so quickly, has now got Rachel Clammer yeah, right on her tail. So if she can't keep someone between them, Spivey, well, presuming she can stay in front, then that's going to change things in terms of the round and the championship, we she think. She had a big glance then at Rachel Perio's Clammer. now ahead of Spivey. So a move from the French woman and Clammer's gone past as well. So at the front, it's Zafiris and Bogran. Bogran not featuring in the championship race, but certainly she's racing for a contract and you'd think she'd get one of them. Zafiris will likely be your championship winner if she can stay in the top two. Taylor Spivey's been dropped by Rachel Clammer. And Leonie Perrier is Rachel Clammer's ticket to distance herself from Taylor Spivey. Leone Perry is committed to getting onto the front too. Cassandra Bogran, very relaxed. We know that Katie Safaris will not let her go. What a weekend though from Leone Perry. We know she's, because she's not figuring in our round or, or championship predictions, we don't talk about her enough, but she is having an absolute stormer of a weekend. Some real work done by the French woman. Part of that French Fab Five we've got. They, we know how good they are over these distances. There's Spivey going past the camera. A good couple of seconds behind Rachel Clammer. Bogran takes Zafiris at the front. Clammer's Perio looking. in third. Clammer right behind. Extending their gap on Taylor Spivey. 50,000 on the line between those two. Behind then Summer Rappaport, who you'd think would probably finish in sixth position as it stands. But at the moment, Bogran, number 55, the French woman, the national sprint champion of France, won WTS Hamburg. She's the mixed team relay world championship winner, member of that team. Finished second in the grand final in the Gold Coast in the under 23s as well. European mixed team relay champion too. But Zafiris, world number two, absolutely accomplished and knows how to race this format. Spivey, the gap just widening between her and Clamour. Perio trying to bridge back across. Clamour in front of her. Here goes Katie. This is what we saw yesterday. You saw you saw Cassandra Bogran push it along the straight yesterday. Katie moved to the front, started to squeeze, 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 got that distance. Cassandra had nothing to respond. But this time, I'm not too sure. Everybody looks fatigued. You're seeing Rachel Clamour run back onto the back of them and Leonie Perio now in difficulty. And wouldn't it be a real turn of events if those two got across to the front two? Uh, that's not out of the realm of possibility at this point. Clamour's almost on there. She's Clamour looked like potentially she's, she's she was on. gone Get and now she's back. right back on. Get through this chicane and she could be right on the back of both the front runners and Taylor Spivey showing the first signs of fatigue. So Rachel Clamour has had a great weekend, dug deep into her reserves for a fifth yesterday. She's pushed the pace all the way through. Always starting to think about her for awards we hand out later on in the in the evening yeah, we like the most combative athlete we like the best on round athlete bonuses available for them and rachel clamor is certainly pressing her claims for one of those after today's performance without question but she's still in this right in it and to be to run back onto these two cassandra bogran considered the best runner this poor katie zafaris outran her yesterday to run back on says a lot about her racing commitment today and She's right there. So four of the top five from yesterday's Eliminator are our top four in the Enduro. Zafiris won yesterday from Bo Grant. Ashley Gentle was third. Leonie Perio fourth. Rachel Clammer fifth. So it's important in terms of round points. Zafiris took 25 yesterday and Bo Grant 21. If in fact it finishes like this, Bo Grant in front and Zafiris second, they'll end e equal on points. But Bogran will be our round winner by virtue of her Sunday positioning. So it's really down to a foot race to see who wins the round between Cassandra Bogran and Katie Zafiris, just as it was yesterday. The two putting absolutely everything in. Clamours Gap Perio for third. She'll pick up second overall in the championship and $50,000 if it stays as it stands. But right now it's a foot race between Bogran and Zafiris for the round winner for 20,000 US dollars. There's absolutely nothing in it. Katie Zafiris and Cassandra Bogran, the present and the future of triathlon. Who's gonna take it? I think Bogrand. it's gonna be Bogran. Bogran, she's won the round. There was a bit of a shoulder and an elbow there as well. But I think Cassandra Bogran has won it in a sprint. And if she's won it, she's won the round. If she's won it, she's taken $20,000. We'll have to see the replay, but I think based on the live pictures, it was Cassandra Bogran. I've nearly fallen off my chair. They're putting absolutely everything. What a race from Cassandra Bogran.
What a race for a 21-year-old athlete. Unbelievable. That was absolutely superb racing. Katie Zafiris at Cassandra Bogrand sprinting the last 300 in tough conditions. Summer Rappaport comes home in sixth. What a race in the Enduro after nine legs to be split by, I don't know, a hundredth of a second. Oh. Rachel Clammer getting taken Klammer. to the medical. Yeah. At the moment, our computers say dead heat. We'll wait to see if we can split the two of them. I have absolutely no idea what happens in the event of a dead heat in terms of round points. But we'll keep you updated. And she had to make herself a bit of room there. The shoulder and the elbow came out from Zephyrus. And I feel like the hands... It might have been the hands that grabbed the tape first. Tape, yeah, I mean, that happened yesterday when Clamour came across the line at the same time as Bogrand in a stage. But here's the shot from above. And it looks to me as though the hands of Cassandra Bogrand came out and took the tape first. We're still waiting for confirmation. But we know one thing, and that's Katie Zafaris is our championship winner. She cannot lose. Sandra Bogrand getting a little bit of medical attention. Good to see her getting up. She's put everything in. Without, without no official. Yeah, so I think they all got again. a She had the lead, Katie Zafaris, early on. We're getting another angle from our cameras. Oh, I can't pick it. I can't pick it. All right, we're actually going to go down right now to the ice bath and hear from Katie Zafiris after that one with Annie Emerson. Well, that is triathlon absolutely at its best, KD. But it came down to a sprint at the end. It's unconfirmed, but it looks like that Cassandra had slightly the edge coming across the line. But what a fight you put up, KT. What a fantastic race. How do you feel? I feel really good. I felt like crap during the whole, whole thing, so... Uh, to be on the podium again, whether that's first or second, I'm really happy. And to get the overall, like, it's really good to be able to... We're, we're, we're hearing that it's currently a dead heat on the computer, so I don't want to say anything yet, but at the moment they've got it down as a dead heat. But, of course, we do know that you take the overall series, and that's what you came here to do. How does that feel, knowing that you're champion here today of the series? Uh, it feels really good. It feels good to be consistent on way different courses, different weather, so... I'm really happy. And, and Cassandra Bogron, for a young athlete with not so much experience, put up an incredible fight today. Oh, my goodness. I mean, even from last year, you can see how much she's improved the swim and the bike. Like, she's going to be a, well, she is a force to be reckoned with already. I'm excited for her for this year. What a race to finish with, though. I think that, to me, looks like your toughest race of the Super League series. I, I, yeah, I think it was. It was, it was hard from the start. Congratulations, Katie. We're really happy. You've taken the series. Let's wait to see what happens in the overall race today. Thank you so much. So, no matter what happens, Katie Zafiris is your championship winner with $100,000, but she wants the $20,000 as well. And here is the super slow motion. Your guess is as good as mine. The two come across the line. And let's have a look, Maka. What do we think? They're getting close. I like Bo Grand early. And I think they might touch the tape at the same time. Oh, I don't I know what to it. do. I have no idea. We're going to wait. We've got all the boffins in the background doing all of the timing with Mika timing. We're going to throw back down to Annie right now. She's with Cassandra Bogran, who looks a little bit out of sorts, Annie. Cassandra, what a race. Yesterday was tough. This was even tougher, but you held on to Katie. Looks like a dead heat. How are you feeling? Uh... Actually, I'm so tired and uh, I can't believe it because uh, on the race, during the race, I felt so bad and uh, so tired and uh, it was just my head who, who is uh, better than my body. Did, did you believe at the end that you could stay with Katie on the run? I just uh, tried to, to be near her and uh, yes. And the thoughts on, on this race, on the Enduro, it has to be one of the toughest triathlon events that there is. Uh, it was uh, the most harder uh, I have uh, never... Uh... OK, congratulations. You've done a brilliant job today, Cassandra. The hardest Cassandra Bogran has ever worked, the hardest triathlon she has ever done, and I don't think she'd get a lot of argument from the rest of our Super 6. There is Taylor Spivey. 
in the ice bath along with Summer Rappaport and Katie Zafiris, uh, three Americans. I think at this point it seems to me as though our championship winner, unconfirmed, is Katie Zafiris along with Rachel Klammer and then Taylor Spivey. We're going to have a look back in just a second at how it all shook out in the closing stages and it was four. We thought for a second that Rachel Klammer was going to be able to bridge back with Leonie Perio who just suddenly looked strong again yeah. after a, a weak part in the in the beginning of, or maybe in the bike and then the beginning of the run but then Rachel Klammer found some reserves. Cassandra controlled the run a lot better than she did yesterday in that last stage and uh, she didn't go out too quick. She made sure she kept Katie close to her. We saw yesterday Katie run her off her feet and it was only with a late surge that Katie got the gap that Cassandra ultimately wasn't big enough and thought she could still close and we saw that Taylor Spivey there really struggled after that first lap she made. Dictated terms to to most of the women but drifted yeah. off the back. Maybe burnt her matches a little bit early on that run but then they turned into the home stretch and Cassandra Bogran and Katie Zafiris truly showed their pedigree, the pair of them, very different stages in their careers, very different styles of triathletes as well, but both equally effective. And it came down to a pure foot race, which is exactly what we want to see in Super League triathlon between Katie Zafiris, our championship leader, and Cassandra Bograt, who I'm just hearing right now is confirmed as our race and round winner. Cassandra Bograt got the win over Katie Zafiris, and this is how she did it coming from behind. Squeezed out a little bit, but just reached for the tape at the right time. And that was all the difference in an hour-long race with eight transitions and nine legs. And there is our race winner and our round winner, Cassandra Bogran. Congratulations. First round win for her. We're going to head right back down now to Annie Emerson, who is with Rachel Klammer, who I think has wrapped up second in the championship. Well, firstly, congratulations, unconfirmed, but it does look like you get second overall in the championships. We looked like you'd lost, we'd lost you there on the run, but you came back and at one point looked like you might even challenge the top two places. What was going on there? I don't know. Uh, I was about to give up and then I thought, no, you can't do this. You have to fight for it. Uh, it was awfully painful, uh, really badly. I just thought, OK, it's only like just one more lap on the track and then I can just sit down, do nothing get fresh again it was just really painful but i just really wanted to fight for it well i have to say you look amazingly fresh considered what considering what you've been through the enduro has to be one of the toughest triathlon events that we've seen in terms of short course racing it was incredibly painful i i did not want to get eliminated uh, the last time we did this in jersey i got out after i think two rounds so i tried to stay in the front for as long as i could i, I said i thought i would rather Finish well, finish sixth, then getting eliminated. So after the two, second round, I thought that's it. I've given everything, but I found some extra energy back. Maybe it was the gel, maybe some Red Bull there. I was like, I needed to get the energy, and yeah, managed to get back. I don't know how, but I did it. Congratulations! Great race today, Rachel. Thank you. An ecstatic Rachel Clamour, and also a fairly bubbly one, considering a big cheer. For Cassandra Bogran as the crowd find out that she is your champion across the course of this weekend and congratulations to her and congratulations also to Rachel Klammer. Here are the official race results. Cassandra Bogran and Katie Zafiris both in a 101.14. Bogran just gets it from Rachel Klammer two seconds back. Perio also two seconds back, very close between them. Taylor Spivey in fifth. She will move up to third in our championship and take 25,000 US dollars unofficially. That's just what I'm guessing. The Summer Rappaport finished in six, but there are some great names there, and each one of them has earned every single dollar and every point across the course of this championship. Oh, without question. And look at the times. When you consider yesterday's racing, the women were going around just under 20 minutes to do it all in a row, three times in a row, and just be over an hour. It's amazing race. It was very, very fast, and uh, to finish like that, oh, you couldn't have scripted a better one. Well, I have to say that being race side here, so close to the action, has been absolutely amazing. This is tough, tough racing. You need nerves of steel, I think, to get around this and not make any mistakes. It was Cassandra today, of course, who came out on top. But I think the overall series, of course, goes to 
Katie Safiris, ah, what a champion she is. She's so hard, so tough. I think there were times in that race when she would really have liked to have sat down on the course, which of course she couldn't, but she had to keep fighting. Cassandra Bogram, though, I have to say, she's one of the athletes that we're going to seriously be looking out for in the future. I've seen her on the World Triathlon Series moving her way up, and she certainly stamped her authority here in Super League in Singapore in what are ferocious conditions. It is just so, so hot. The humidity is something that I've never felt before myself. It is now time to go to the, cel the ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, sit tight. We're about to have the prize presentation in just a few short moments. Or Rocky Bridge. He's good. Yeah, yeah. He's just tall and all the yes. distance. Yes. Now? And the men, the men's race is always. We are just about to so crown our round winners, Cassandra Bogram. What a fantastic run it was from her. Katie Zafiris as well. She's all smiles. She was just picked at the post. And Rachel Clammer, we thought she was gone in that run. I don't know whether it was the gel, whether it was the Red Bull, but she found another gear as well. It was a fantastic race from all three of these women. What a incredible triathlon to put on in front of this big, big crowd here in Singapore. It's been fantastic and what a way to finish this season as well. It's been an excellent race. It's been an excellent weekend. And well done to all three of our athletes in third position, Rachel Klammer. In second position, just was Katie Zafiris. And then finally, it was Cassandra Bogran as well. So fantastic work from all three of our athletes. We're just getting set for the podium presentation. Won't be too long now until we get this podium underway. Mac has arrived as well. How good was that? Oh, yeah, that was one of the best races I've seen to end the grand final like that. And uh, what a race by Cassandra Bogran, Katie Zafaris to win the series and Rachel Clammer to fight all the way to the finish line to take out Taylor Spivey to get on the podium. What an when event. You, when you came up with that, you must have been hoping this is exactly how it was going to be. We're going to throw to our podium right now and crown Cassandra Bogran as our round winner here in Singapore. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together. It's now time for the prize presentation for our Super League Triathlon Enduro Female Winners. Please step forward and present the medals. And first up in third place this evening, from the Netherlands, Rachel Plummer! And in second place from the United States of America, Katie Zuffer! And just by a breath of a hair, ladies and gentlemen, our champion for the Enduro category here today, and our champion here at the Super League Triathlon for this category, please put your hands together. From France, Cassandra Bogran.
Sandra Bogrand can't seem to find a way to open her champagne. There we go with a little help from her friends. And Rachel Clummer gets a little bit wet as well, but how good was that? A fantastic effort from all three of our women. The round winner, Cassandra Bogrand, 20,000 US dollars. That was our race though, one, two and three. And it'll be very similar for the round as well. So congratulations to our women's race winners. Fantastic effort. Truly excellent atmosphere down here. We've finally been let out of the commentary box. And well done to Cassandra Bogrand. She wins 20,000 US dollars. And Maka, uh, the future of triathlon standing there on the top step. Well, there's been a lot of talk about Cassandra Bogrand for the last couple of years. There's been a lot of promise. She didn't win the World Championship last year. She came to Super League Racing in Jersey. She dominated that triple mix day. And to take out Katie Zafaris in a grand final, what a race. What a race, what a talent, what a future. A huge race. That was for our race win. And now it's time for our round win. And we have the same three at the top. So the cream truly rising to the top, uh, top across the course of the weekend. Consistency is key. The eliminator yesterday, incredibly tough. As you say, recovering takes a lot of experience. Or in the case of Sandra Rowe Grant, just pure youth as well to come back and do it again on a nine-leg race. Well, she seemed to race for that youthful exuberance. We heard her in the... In, the, in her interview saying she felt tired all day, Katie said the same thing, and I think that staying back and able to, to save the legs for that sprint finish, the win today gave her the round, so she'd be very, very happy. This is one of the biggest wins of her career. Time now for the round podium. Winners. So ladies and gentlemen, in third place, this evening, from the Netherlands, Rachel Lover. Presenting the check and champagne is also Mr. Justin Park from the Asian Triathlon Confederation. In second place from the United States of America, let's give it up for Katie Zappos. And ladies and gentlemen, our overall winner of the race weekend, from France, Cassandra Beaugrand. $20,000 for Cassandra Beaugrand and another chance to stand atop the podium and another chance perhaps Maka to get the champagne spray right. Well she struggled both days and I see a third time lucky for Cassandra Bogrand but I think over time she's going to learn to do that very very well. I think this is the, only the beginning of a magnificent career we're about to witness. So $10,000 to Rachel Clamish will stand atop the podium well on one step of the podium at least in just a second when we crown our championship winner and second and third place. $15,000 for Katie Zafiris, who again stands on the second step after just being picked at the post, and 20,000 US dollars for Cassandra Bogran. So congratulations to all three of our athletes. We're going to introduce another one in just a second, but hugely impressive effort from all three of these. She's not there. There is the championship points. Zafiris wins in the end with 113, Rachel Klammer 76, and Cassandra Beaugrand, by virtue, she missed a round as well, and yet comes back and pips Taylor Spivey by three points to take third overall, and wow. she missed two rounds. We did not even pick that in the commentary position, and obviously Taylor struggled in that second lap of the run, and what a costly kilometre that was for Taylor Spivey. He's going to finish off the podium. And again, we can only talk about the talent that Cassandra Bogrand has to do two rounds of Super League racing with double points on the grand final and to finish third overall. Wow. That just shows you the true class of Cassandra Bogrand to miss two rounds, come back on the double points, do incredibly well and take three. If she had been there for the whole series, would we see her on the top step? Well, well that's the question we're all going to ask going into next year's season. What's going to happen with, uh, with another year's experience for Cassandra Bogrand, Rachel? 
Rachel Clammer looking magnificent. Taylor Spivey a little bit angry. We'll see Kirsten Casper back. Next year's racing is going to be remarkable. But again, I'm going to say, Cassandra Bogran, I haven't seen an athlete of this calibre within the triathlon world since Emma Snowsill, who won the Olympic Games for Australia in 2008. Such a unique talent. And to race with such discipline, focus and, and belief is remarkable for a 21-year-old. Standing behind the podium right now after four rounds across five months, eight different race days, five different formats, a learning curve for all of these women. And at the, be at the end, the best truly shone through. Katie Zafiris is your championship winner. Rachel Klammer, a great run at the end. She will take $50,000 as second place in the championship. And finally, Cassandra Bogran just storms into third place. It's time for our championship presentation. It's now time to crown our champions for the Super League Triathlon season 2018 2019. Please put your hands together as we now invite Michael Dulce, co founder and CEO of Super League Triathlon, to present the prize money and champagne and Brzezinski. And also joining us is Leonid Bogoslavsky co-founder and chairman for this prize presentation. And so, in third place, from France, Cassandra Bogran! And in second place, ladies and gentlemen, Congratulations to Katie Zafiris after a very long and very tough season. She stands atop the podium and picks up 100,000 US dollars. She has been absolutely fantastic and consistency was key in the end. As she won the Leo, we named that after Richard Murray won that in Hamilton Island, the trophy, the Elena Bogoslowski trophy designed. It's a $30,000 trophy, so it's been a magnificent weekend for her. It was a magnificent weekend and a magnificent champagne pop finally. She got it right. Bogart, she got it right. right. So congratulations to her. Worthy winners, all three. Consistency key for both Rachel Glamour and Katie Zafiris. And just pure speed for Cassandra Bogran, who will be so tough to beat when the season comes back around again in Jersey in September. And that'll be here before we know it. But I, I think a lot of the men right now have watched this race. They know what's going to face them. You saw Cassandra Bogran just play a tactically brilliant race to move up to win the event over Cassandra, Katie Zafiris and to bottle herself on the podium. The men's race will be remarkable. I can't wait to get to see it get underway. I know, if we thought we saw some good work in the women's race, we cannot wait for the men's race to get underway. And we'll do that very soon. But Katie Zafiris, they had an air of inevitability, I suppose, about it. She's been so good. She had 71 points out of a possible 75. And she really capped it off with a commanding performance, even if she didn't quite get the win by about this far uh, we'll see, today. Well, well, I've seen the photo finish. It'll be, it'll, I'm sure it's going to go viral. It's, it's not even that much, it's less than a hundredth of a second, but I think, you know, we see Katie Zafiris was beaten in Majorca in the last round by Taylor Spivey. She, got to, she was beaten again here today, but her consistency was key. She went out of the season very, very strongly, winning the first two rounds comfortably. But to see the sort of talent coming through this series and refining their skills has been a big takeaway for me. Now, the men's coming up, the men's enduro, as we say, nine legs, eight transitions, and it is wide open after what happened yesterday. What is going to happen? I can't pick it. We, we don't know what will happen. We saw Vincent Louis yesterday get a flat tyre. Has now put himself in a vulnerable position to win the overall. The eliminations are going on left, right and centre. It's, it's a little bit cooler. That chicane, they hit a lot, of, lot quicker than the, the women's race. I'm going to go out on the limb and say Johnny Brownlee seemed to be in big form. 
Vincent Louis will beat him, but I think Johnny Brownlee's going to give him a real push and run for his money. Okay, it's going to be fantastic. My money's on Henry Schoeman. We've got to pick up about uh, a ton of glitter right now and get ready for the men's enduro. Do not miss it. It's coming up very, very soon. Check your local guides. Your winner of Super League Triathlon for this year, Katie Zafiris.
What a race it was. The women's enduro came down to a sprint finish just a few moments ago between Cassandra Bogran and Katie Zafiris. We had to go to a photo finish and it was Cassandra Bogran in the end who took the round. But Katie Zafiris took the Super League Triathlon Championship after four rounds. Consistency was her best friend. 71 points from 75 coming in. Win yesterday, second today, and she takes 100,000 US dollars. We are in Singapore for the start of the men's enduro. It's going to be a fantastic race. It really could go any way at all. My name is Will McCoy. Alongside me right now, Chris McCormack. But forget Chris McCormack because we have the champ in the house right here. It's been 10 minutes since the win. How do you feel? Oh, I feel really good. I mean, this t this day was definitely, I think, the hardest of all the Super Leagues, and I'd never really felt good. So um, for it to come down to the finish, I'm, I'm really happy, even though, you know, I wanted that extra whatever inch, centimeter, millimeter. <laughs> so, um, but I gave it everything I had. Yeah, you take $100,000, you take the championship, you take the trophy, which is just down here. It's too heavy to even pick up. It's fantastic, though. And you wanted that extra inch. Come on. <laughs> but no, I mean, I'm really happy to have the series. It was all different types of racing, all different types of courses and formats. So to be able to be on the podium, podium every single time, I'm really happy with it. Nakahad, what did you think of all of that? We're going to see the finish again, I think, in just a second. But what a fantastic race that was when you came up with this format to make it finish like that. How good? Oh, look, I couldn't have scripted anything better. I think I was really impressed with the Jersey event, but for me, the takeaway Singapore has been the race of the, of the entire series. That, the race yesterday with you and Cassandra going head-to-head -head and uh, you, you squeezing that win and then that sprint finish today. I've seen the photo finish. I'm sure it's going to go viral. It's, there is nothing in it. It was uh, remarkable. Let's have a look again at the finish, and we might get you to talk us through it. How was it here? Well, it was such a decision of whether to go in front of her and start sprinting or to try and wait on her shoulder. I tried to go for it, and right at the end, I could see her, and uh, I tried to get it, but I guess I didn't. <laughs> you, threw, you, you threw a slight elbow yeah, there, yeah. <laughs> just a little tiny elbow. Was that not an elbow there? I didn't mean to, and then she was telling me on the podium, she's like, I have a cramp in my arm, and I don't know why, and I was like, I'm pretty sure that might have been me. <laughs> <laughs> don't look at the replay. Yeah, Never yeah. look at the replay. But a fantastic effort nonetheless, and you must be just so happy with how it all panned out across the course of this entire journey. Oh, yeah, I mean, I couldn't have, well, I guess I could have gotten this one, but I, <laughs> I'm so happy with how this whole series has gone, and it's a great way to start the 2019 year. Let's have a look now at the men. We're building up to the men's enduro, and the state of play is a very, very tight one. The championship points, Vincent Lewis, 75 points. Henry Schumann, 63. Richard Murray, 48. Jonathan Brownlee, 46. Now, that was coming into this weekend. Vincent Lewis had a punchy yesterday, finished 17, so he's way back in terms of rankings, and here is the race for the title. If Henry Schumann now finishes first or second today, he is almost certainly our champion, barring an incredibly unlikely turn of events. If he finishes below second, he still can win the title, but it opens the door just slightly for Jonathan Brownlee, the Olympic silver medalist, and the world number two, Vincent Lewis, who will be looking to bounce back from that one, but what a race we're in for. Oh yeah, I mean it was such a so, so sad to see Vince yesterday, but uh, I just know he's going to come back really strong for today. And yesterday was super interesting for the men, so. I, I don't know what's going to happen today. There was the puncture yesterday, as I said before, a little bit of Tokyo drift and a little staple in the tyre. He, he rode three laps with a flat tyre and tried to run his way back in, but he couldn't quite do it. it just Super League, just when you think everything's going to work out, something comes out of left field. Well, I think we both were shocked in that first stage with him going down being eliminated. But what it does, it opens the door for Vincent Louis today to be a lot more tactical than he's had to be all season. He's just dominated these races. But now he has to make sure there's certain people in between Henry Schumann and, and Jonathan Brownlee in particular, the only people that can challenge him for the title. But what's he going to do? He can't go off the front and win it. Does he stay to keep it together? Does he, does he force a race between the others? I can't wait to watch this one go unfold. Speaking of Jonathan Brownlee, he had a bit of a terrible year in 2018. He starts 2019 with a big win and you can tell it meant a lot to him. Up until about 15 minutes ago, it was the best winning moment of Super League Singapore until it was overtaken by Katie and Cassandra. But it meant a lot to Johnny, didn't it? Oh yeah, it's awesome to see him come back after a year that he kind of struggled with and especially with this heat and humidity, which he's also struggled with in the past, so it's going to be an exciting race today. Yeah, the athletes, the men are just starting to line up for the enduro. It's going to be a fantastic one. We can see them heading into the water. It's going to be nine legs, swim, bike, run, swim, bike, run, 
Swim, bike, run, if you can believe that. No breaks whatsoever. You guys did it in about an hour. Maybe the men will crack the hour. We'll have to wait and see. We had a chance to talk to both the man who led the championship and perhaps was the favourite coming in to the man who's favourite now as well. Vincent Lewis and Henry Schumann took time to talk to us this morning heading into this one. Definitely yesterday was tough. Uh, it's sad to like just can't act as, as you want to act. But yeah, it's, it's racing, it's sport and... I had, a, I had a good night, I did some math with my coach to just check where I was with the points, but everything's still possible, so I will race. Uh, I will race my pure style, angry from the, from the start to the finish, and yeah, I will, I will make my opponents ra run for their money. You obviously missed out on the majority of the race yesterday, so you come into this race today, the Enduro, just a little bit fresher. Yeah, I hope so. Um, I, I felt good yesterday during the first leg, uh, but unlucky I had, I had that flat tire, but the feeling, the feeling was good, I, I can wait for a race today, I think I'm maybe a bit fresher than my, my opponents, but yeah, we'll see, uh, sometimes you, you're better on the second day. So Henry, yesterday's mishap for Vincent Louis has worked in your favour and you now stand a great chance of taking the overall title, do you think that adds pressure to your race today? Um, yeah, it's really unfortunate that Vincent had that puncture in the first race. It's really bad luck, um, but I do feel for him. I think he's going to come out guns blazing today, uh, which is good. It will be highly competitive today, but um, yeah, I, I don't think I have that championship title. There's still a lot that can happen today. Uh, we've got Johnny Brownlee, who's doing really well. He won the race yesterday, so I think it's, it's all open. He could also take a championship title. It just all depends what happens today in the Enduro, so I think it's going to be really nail biting and you know for me I'm just going to focus on my own race I just want to have the best race that I can possible and uh, hopefully you know the enduro I think is more my type of race so let's see what happens. Such is the beauty of Super League Triathlon the Vincent Lewis can take maximum points across three rounds and one puncture something out of his control and now he's not the championship favourite anymore. Henry Schumann who's finished second in Jersey, second in Malta, second in Majorca has bided his time and finished fourth yesterday and takes in a little bit of an advantage. It's still anyone's race though and it was good for those guys to take the time to talk to us. Vince, I noticed there, said he's going to race angry, he's going to run angry. He has to run tactical as well, though, doesn't he? Oh, that's, I think that's the key of the race today, is the tacticality that Vincent has to apply to this Is that event. a word? I don't know, but it sounds tacticality. good. Tacticality. Tacticality. Yeah, but I, I think the takeaway from me yesterday was the disappointment that Henry Schumann, in his interview, that he, he didn't want to win the championship this way. He wanted Vince to be in, in, in magnificent form, not to put a puncture to, to give him the championship win, but, uh, you know, you take it when you get it, and I think he's going to race with anger and aggression himself. Katie, how do you see this one playing out? You've got Jonathan Brownlee having a win after a tough year. He's back on form, obviously. Henry Schumann, you can never count him out, the Commonwealth Games gold medalist. And, of course, Vincent has been wearing the pink with you all the way through the season. What is going to happen? I think Tommy Zafiris is going to take the win. <laughs> um, no, for the, the men who are in the in a contest for the standings, I, I really have no idea. I think Vince is going to race really, really assertively and aggressively. And um, But Johnny's known to always race that way, and so is Henry. So I don't want to call that one. Well, Katie, we've run out of time. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. It's only been 15 minutes since you've won. Congratulations. We can't wait to have you back again in season 2019-20. Oh, I'm so excited. Thank you. We're excited to have you as well. It's all about the enduro. We've just seen it performed by the women excellently. This is how it all plays out. The enduro. Designed as the ultimate test of an athlete's physical stamina and their mental grit. Long, brutal, unforgiving and simple. Swim, bike, run, okay, that seems fine, but then do it again, and then do it again. Three triathlons back to back to back. No room for rest, no room for error. Nine legs, eight transitions, and a live elimination with two athletes cut at the end of each discipline. 16 athletes will fall on the way to the final leg, survive and earn a chance to run to victory. A unique combination of pace and strategy, conservation and aggression. The Enduro, prepare for the ultimate test. It's called the Enduro for a reason. It's about staying mentally sharp while you dig deeper than ever before with eight transitions across nine legs. Two athletes eliminated at the end of each leg 
And if you survive that, you make it through to the race finish. That is an achievement all in itself. The Enduro, one of the toughest formats ever devised. Well, I think the male athletes might be enjoying slightly cooler conditions here now in Singapore, but not by much. Athletes really relax, but I'm starting to feel the nerves just slightly bubbling away. It's a tough day today, a tough contest alongside me. A man that raced very well indeed yesterday and literally pushed Johnny Brownlee to the wire. How are you feeling today, Tyler? Yeah, I mean, I could give you a, a fake answer, but I feel honestly my legs are trash. But I'm sure a lot of the guys are saying the same thing behind closed doors. So we'll have a good crack at it today. It's going to be, uh, I mean, you say it cooled down, but it's still like 28 degrees here. And we're not diving into something warm, so that'll, that'll play to my advantage for sure. Yeah, you just mentioned the water temperature up around 30 degrees. Now that's pretty hot, isn't it? You're not going to get a cooling effect when you dive back in. No, you don't get that same uh, reprieve, and uh, we'll see hopefully that play out and, and play on people as the race goes on. I think we'll see a lot more damage done because it's continuous, and we don't get that 10 minutes in the ice bath, so that'll be an interesting factor. I tell you what, Tyler, a lot of the athletes have been talking about you. You're a slight athlete, and you seem to absorb the heat here very well. What was it like running on the shoulder of a multiple Olympic medalist yesterday? Uh, pretty surreal. Uh, I've done it once before, and uh, I got him last time, and he got me this time. So uh, I honestly thought I had it with 500 to go, and he just cranked it up, and I was no match for the man. Tyler, of course, no rest today. What are going to be your tactics with this swim, bike, run, swim, bike, run, swim, bike, run? If I have a good race, you won't see me to the last run. That's where you're going to hold back until. Yeah. Great stuff. Good luck, Tyler. Can't wait to see you race. Well, still a huge amount to play for here. But as we saw in the men's race yesterday, a whole lot can happen. Takes nerves of steel and absolutely no mishaps for a great race here in Singapore. <laughs> The last day of the last round of Super League Triathlon. We are going to crown our champion in just over an hour's time. Right now, though, it's the men's enduro. We saw such a fantastic race. Couldn't have scripted it better in the women's enduro. If you missed that, go to superleaguetriathlon.com or the YouTube channel or check out one of the replays on one of the many networks around the world that carry Super League Triathlon and are buying into what is a phenomenon in multi-sport. Over one billion households reached with this Fantastic weekend from Singapore, just north of the equator, and it certainly feels that way. Incredibly humid and hot. The city there you can see in the background, Sentosa Cove, is where we are racing. Richard Murray is in position number one, a champion from 2017. Jonathan Brownlee is a championship contender as well. Look out for him. Going down, Luke Schofield, Ryan Bailey, Jaden Schofield, Hayden Wild. He has been so good, Hayden Wild. The um, uh, Kiwi and Tommy Zafiris. Well, that's Katie Zafiris's tip for the entire thing. Her husband, he's a fantastic swimmer and Olympic trialist. Oscar Coggins raced out of his skin. The man from Hong Kong yesterday and Jumpy Furuya from Japan will be hoping for a little bit better. Here's our championship points. Vincent Lewis is at the top, but he's under all sorts of pressure from Henry Schumann of South Africa, the Rio bronze medalist and Commonwealth Games gold and multiple duathlon world champion Richard Murray as well as Jonathan Brownlee, who won yesterday and so took the maximum points from the day. If he can do that again today, he is in with every chance of stealing that $100,000, as is Schumann, because Vincent Lewis had a puncture on the bike course. Here is our course map. It is a straight shot, actually. It doesn't show it there. Out to the boys, two quick turns and back in for 300. The bike and the run are both on the same course 900 meter lap a chicane at the bottom ocean way you can see that is all tarmac but plenty of it is paved and there's some changes in surface the run is two laps of that course the bike is five laps and it is fast and flat lewis will be in the pink has been all season henry schumann is the best swimmer he'll be in the blue our bike split leader richard murray and our run leader from the best splits in mallorca jonathan brownlee the best in transition ben canute our young athletes will be in the white you can see a couple of them there in luke and Jaden schofield number 77 and 95 the identical twins water temp an amazing 29 degrees 31 in the air and the enduro nine legs gets underway right now it's a clean start a slow start though from igor polianski who led the swim out he's on the left hand side matt, but matt, matt hauser. hauser on the far left has immediately taken 
some clean water at the front. He is a 20-year-old, had an accident, ran into a car door last year on the bike. He's just coming back. He finished 11th yesterday. He was very strong early on, but just found wanting a little bit in the conditions. And there he is, the Australian, who is back to some kind of form for 2019. And it is good to see him back, too. He had some fantastic results. Tommy Zaferis was straight to Matt Howes' feet. Matt is renowned for his ridiculously quick starts. We saw it in Jersey last year, and I, I commented yesterday that in his second stage yesterday he was a little slower. I spoke to him this morning about it, and he felt that he felt a little bit tired yesterday. He feels a lot better this morning after his warm-up, and he's looking forward to the enduro format. Well, there he is leading out. Tommy Zaferis behind him, as we said, an Olympic trialist in... Oh, that's Polyansky. Is it Polyansky? Yes, yeah, no, he's right. He's just gone. Even though he had a very slow start, he's managed to get on the feet there. And Igor Polyansky, incredibly experienced, the Russian, yeah. and then Zaferis behind them, and a little bit of a gap back to Vincent Lewis, who knows that he needs to have things turn his way, but also produce one of his best performances if he's to hold off Henry Schumann and Jonathan Brownlee. Schumann, you can see that in the blue there, in about fifth position next to Vincent Lewis, and Schumann will just be glued to Vince Lewis the whole way through, knowing that if they can finish together, then Henry Schumann will likely be our Super League Triathlon champion. Yesterday, there was 25 points to Johnny Brownlee out of a possible 25. Tyler Mislachuk, we saw interviewed there by Annie Emerson. Johnny Brownlee, a long way back yeah, with, he is. with Richard Murray. He's wearing the red there. You can see yeah. him just turning the boy. So he's already probably 20-odd metres back on Hauser, who continues to lead this one. And if anything, he's actually got a little bit out on Polianski, who's just waiting back a bit. See, Johnny Brownlee came around that last swim boy. He moved to the right to get away from the hustle and bustle and, and get some clear water and start to move up because we... As we know, that the last two out of the water, the last two across the line in each discipline are eliminated, and he was a little bit further back than he wanted to be. Sometimes you don't know where you are in the water, you just know you're a fair way back. He needs to slide up, and two are going to go after this first swim. So a three-minute race for two athletes. Yeah, two rules that we need to keep emphasising is every time through transition, the last two will be eliminated. There is also an 80-second rule in effect. If you fall 80 seconds behind the leaders at any transition, you too will be eliminated. If you are not in the bottom two, but you are still 80 seconds behind, we'll have more than two eliminated until we arrive potentially at a super six. And then those super six will head through on to finish this race. But Matt Hauser leads at the moment from Eagle Polianski, Tommy Zafiris, and Vincent Louis and Henry Scoom and our championship contenders are in fourth and fifth. Henry Schumann's moved up right next to Vincent Louis. As you said, he'll tag him the whole swim. And Igor Polianski, who led out yesterday, playing a little bit more tactically, he was the one who was first out of the water but drifted right back in opening stage yesterday and it ended up being eliminated. Matt Hauser out of the water. Tommy Zafir is second. Igor Polianski with him as well. Vincent Lewis and Henry Schumann. Two men will be eliminated. Someone is way off the back at the moment. We'll bring that to you. Dorian Connix, Ben Canute there as well, Jonas Schomburg. There is Johnny Brownlee in the red. Ryan Bailey, Matt Sharp, who had a great effort yesterday. There's Richard Murray. Tyler Mislachuk, Richard Murray survives. One person's not going to survive this one, and I think is it going to be Oscar Coggins? Yes, it is. So he is eliminated by one metre behind Ollie Turner. And Nathan, Nathan Killam, Killam is as out. Well. Nathan Killam is our other eliminated athlete, the man from Canada, the third Canadian in the field. And already they are out on the bike and the pace is being pushed. You saw Leo Berger there quickly. He uh, had some problem with his feet yesterday, ran in bare feet, if you can believe that. They're all blistered up, but he's trying to make it at least to the second run. At the front, it's Tommy Zafiris, who doesn't have the greatest run. He's got to push the pace on the bike. How's it behind him? Igor Polianski. Sharp and Canute, and there's Johnny Brownlee, who won yesterday. We'll move up. Ryan Bailey there. And Matt Sharp. On his, here's, our, here's our bike leader, and Richard Murray, the best on, best on the bike, and our youth. And Andreas Schilling a lot further back than he needs to be. All right, great shots from our drone. You can see as they come around the back end of the course. And it's Tommy Zafiris. As we say, he has a great swim. He has an excellent bike and he needs to push it and gap as many people as he can. With the elimination rule in effect, Hauser, Polianski, Vincent Lewis, Schumann, Dorian Connix, Ben Canute.
So a couple of Frenchmen up the front. Johnny Brownlee, who won yesterday, leads Ryan Bailey in the second group. And they can't afford to let these guys get away too much. Don't forget it. Swim, bike, run. Swim, bike, run. Swim, bike, run. No breaks this time. Last two are eliminated. Last two across the line at East Discipline are eliminated. And Richard Murray a lot further back than I think he would like to be. I know his swim is not a strength, but he usually in this big mass start, beginnings of these Enduros, is able to slide into a good position and stay up near the front. He's going to have to work these next two laps. He's got Johnny Brownlee just in front of him, who knows he's going to close this gap to the front, group of about seven. And Richard Murray doesn't want to be outside that firepower in case they put the hammer down and isolate him. Very good to see Dorian Kynes, the Frenchman. There he is there on debut in Super League. I spoke to him this morning and he was a little shocked by the pace of Super League triathlon as people are when they come in for the first time and just didn't have, the, didn't have it in the second swim at the opening of the second stage. So we'll see what he's like when he gets into the water this time. Big group with a couple of Canadians in Mislachuk and Sharp. Hayden Wilde is a little bit back in the pack. He's got, he's got Richard Murray with him. You know one thing about Hayden Wilde, he's going to chase and chase and chase. Richard Murray is a tactically very, very smart athlete. He'll know that. He's probably sitting behind Hayden going, go, 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 making him do a lot more work than he has to, and he'll close those gaps. There's Schilling and Ollie Turner there. Luke Schofield as well. Wearing the white, they're the young athletes. Also the white as in Matt Hauser as he checks that he's got his goggles in the front of his jersey just to make sure. Look at Johnny Brownlee in the back of the screen looking over his shoulder asking for some help Ryan Bailey. Please come around. I've been on the front for the last two laps. If we're going to close this gap we've got to work together. He's a bit frustrated Johnny. He knows it's dangerous. I think when Richard Murray and Hayden Wild get across to this group he'll get some help and that gap will close. Yeah how quickly things can string out. Schilling, Turner, Schofield. That's Jaden Schofield. Here's Luke Schofield as well. In they had a, a tangle, those two, yesterday, and that is the back of the race as it stands. So unless these two Schofields, youngsters from Australia, can move up, they're going to both face elimination at the same time. I know they like to do things together, but elimination is not one of them. Here's the front of our race as they come round again. Hauser now in the lead. And there's some urgency in this front group. Matt Hauser, both Matt Hauser and Tommy Zafaris have been doing a lot of work on the front, I think. When you get little gaps like this, you take those opportunities to force the athletes behind to do a little bit more work than they have to. It's about endurance. That's why this event's called Enduro. And the more work you do on the front end of this race, the more you're going to pay for it in the back end. And that's where they hope that you can run over the top of a tired Johnny Brownlee. It's a lot more difficult to run over the top of a fresh one. Jaden and Luke Schofield, number 95 and number 77 at the back of our field. Matt Hauser at the front of our field, another Australian. Schumann and Lewis very much together. And Johnny Brownlee still at the front of this pack. Ryan Bailey behind him. And Johnny will be hoping on this straightaway at the back that he can get a little bit more help. Andreas Schilling, Ollie Turner sitting off him and Mark Hugh as well. Dorian Connex has had his mouth open since the first lap of this bike. He's like he's <laughs> hanging on for dear life. The one thing, Igor Polyansky, who drifted back yesterday, has stayed a lot closer to the front group. He's got such a big swim. He really struggles on the run, but he knows he's swimming to close those gaps, and he needs to escape with his first race to make sure he can get through to the second. There is Mark Hughes having a bit of a lonely race. The man from Hong Kong, and behind him, Jaden Schofield and Luke Schofield. So Matt Hauser has taken the gas off and dropped to the back of that pack. You can see Hayden Wild trying to move up his way through that one as well. And here together, the groups have come together. And interesting is Tyler Mislachuk, who ultimately closed that gap at the end. We heard him earlier talking to Annie Emerson, saying, if you don't see me or race until the last triathlon, I've had a great race. So he saw the desperation in getting across to this group. There's too much firepower up front with big runs. He's looking for an overall round win today from the second yesterday. Yeah, it's all about the championship in this race. Vincent Lewis had a terrible day yesterday, had a punch and finished 17th. He has a 12-point lead still over Henry Schumann, but it all comes down to results in this one. Lewis needs to have a great result, and he needs to put people between himself and Henry Schumann if he is to win. Otherwise, Schumann, if he can finish in the top two or three, no matter what Vince does, he will win this one, and at the moment, they're second and third. Ollie Turner just shadowing Andreas Schilling as much as possible. He needs to have a better day today. Ollie Turner doesn't want to have a short race. 
these are the last three on the field. And one of the Schofields there, he, he Jaden is right can, behind. Well, he can sprint there and still stay in it. If he, uh, two are going to go at the, I saw at one section there, both the Schofields was last and second last, but now Jaden's moved up to be in equal, se equal second last position. So uh, a sprint could keep him in the, into the next run. Beruya, Schilling and Turner, and now Jaden has managed to lift himself out of elimination and he's having a look to he's asking the question mark you and now luke schofield are our two back athletes the twins 19 years of age they finished in a dead heat before in canberra they had a tangle with each other yesterday and now at least Mark Hughes stands between them. Yeah, it was a terrible turn there by, by Andrea Schilling. He overgeared that one, he came out, he had to stop it. He's, look at the gap he's left. That was just poor gear choice by Andrea Schilling there. He was right on the back of that group, came out of the corner, obviously didn't change gears, went to put some power down. He was in too big a gear. These guys accelerating the gaps open. And there the little mistakes can be very, very costly. He has to close this gap or work through on the run to stay in contention. These accumulate over the, over the length of the enduro, and you pay for it at the back end. Oh, now at the front of this race is our championship leader. One and two in the championship, one and two in the race. Henry Schoeman second, plenty of talent behind. Richard Murray's moved up, Hayden Wilde's moved up, and Ollie Turner has tacked onto the back of this pack, and he'll need to stay there and work very hard to do so. When he goes to the front, Vincent Louis just applies so much power. You see the gaps really start to open up. He just he sits very, very high on his bottom. There's a crash. Jaden's hit the ground again. So, so yet Jayden. another accident for Jaden Schofield just as he moved out of the danger zone. He has fell right back into it. In fact, it looks like he'll be over. And also, Faroui has done the same. So he's back on the bike, the Japanese. And Luke Schofield's probably slid past, straight past his brother is now safe. Well, we'll see in just a second as they come off the bike for the first time. A great dismounts in traffic from all of our athletes. So accomplished at that. Make it look very easy. Tommy Zafiris leads us in. Vince Louie has a little bit of trouble racking his bike there. That's going to cost him a little bit of time. And our race director, Michael Thompson, is out there ready to hold out the yellow elimination flag for the two last in. But Schumann leads out Vince Lewis. Someone's in front of both of them as well. And that is he Faruya. No, who was that, Mark You? Yeah, he survived. So both the twins are out. Both the twins will be eliminated together again. Together again. And here is a replay, and he's just coming a little bit hot, overcorrected, and gone straight over the bars, slid out on the front. And both Luke Schofield and Jaden Schofield come in one and two, and that is their day done. Both their parents are here, huge fans of Super League Triathlon, watching their sons compete, and, and the first, they've the learned first, plenty. Yeah, the first time we've got to see Vincent Louis run this weekend. Very controlled early season for him. He's gone away after the last round in Mallorca. He's been working very, very hard with his coach. He's been a big group of them together doing a big winter base. He looks as relaxed as ever. Henry Schumann looks a little bit better than he did yesterday. And Johnny Brownlee, no panic there. Aiden Wilde on the back. And Richard Murray, who hasn't done a lot of running, just off the back of them again. Yeah, struggling with an ankle injury. He's only run eight days in 2019, which for me would be a lot. But for him, not very much whatsoever. But it held up quite well in the first couple of stages of the Eliminator yesterday. At the front of our race, though, are our championship contenders. After a 17th place yesterday and just one round point, Vincent Lewis leads from Henry Schumann, who finished fourth yesterday and thus took a whole haul of points. And Ollie Turner is finding the going tough, the man from Jersey, the pride of Jersey. There's plenty of people on that lovely island, which we'll visit again in September, who are watching right now and love cheering their hometown boy on in Super League Triathlon. At the front, though, it's Schumann and Lewis. One of these men, it is likely, will win the championship at the end of this race. But lurking behind all of them is Jonathan Brownlee, who's moved up into about sixth position. He also has a chance to win this one. He had a big, big win yesterday, and it meant a lot to him. You could tell as he came across the line. There's Leo Bergier with shoes on today. 
That's a nice look for him. Yeah, he's, his feet are destroyed. We saw them before the start of the race. He ran, opted to run the last run yesterday without shoes. His, his feet were slipping in him. He took them off and destroyed his shoes. There was a question mark whether he'd start today because his feet were in such bad way. He's there, but he's to be right up the front and still moving quite well. It's a good sign for him. There's a lot on the line for Leo. Top five finish in the championship series. We've had a withdrawn athlete. It's Peruya of Japan has uh, withdrawn from this race. He's found the going very, very fast over the course of the weekend. And Richard Murray off the back here. And Richard Murray, yes, also having a little struggle. Jonas Schomburg's really had a great round. He had a stage win yesterday. The German, he's really coming to his own in these hot conditions. Matt Sharp as well, and Tyler Musichuk, the two Canadians. And ahead of Andreas Schilling is Richard Murray wearing the green. By virtue of the fastest bike splits in our previous round in Mallorca back in October. Tommy Zavirus is tagging onto the back of his pack and he'll need to stay there if he's to stand a chance of avoiding elimination. As we get an update on our timing screens and all the big names are up towards the top. Richard Murray is the one who's missing there. He comes in in 13th, five seconds ahead of Andreas Schilling. And there is Igor Polianski, who really had a tough bike run yesterday after a great swim and ended up spat out the back early on. Igor Polianski's run has been right off for this entire league. His swim has been magnificent. and some races, his bike's been OK and his run's OK. But definitely here in Singapore, his run is 30 40% off the front athletes. He needs to go back to the drawing board, work over the season with the Tokyo Olympics just around the corner. He was using this series to refine a lot of the skills, and the one show, the one highlight for him is he needs to work on that run. Well, at least he uh, knows exactly what he needs to work on now. Back in 16th position is Oliver Turner. 50 seconds back now. There is an 80-second rule, so if you fall behind through any transition, 80 seconds, you are gone. But a huge group, and this really works, I suppose, at this point into the hands of Vincent Lewis, and he needs this to work. Without question, you sat up all night doing crunching the numbers, I but did. Vince, tired. Yeah, Vincent Lewis needs that big group to stay together. He, he could go away and win this thing, but it's the athletes he puts between him and Henry Schumann that take away the vital points that ultimately are going to win him this championship. So in Henry Schumann's mind, do you think he needs to continue to push the pace, string this one out, and force Vince to go with him? Well, it's a difficult position for Henry Schumann to be in because he knows that Vincent Lewis is going to cover every move he does. If you're Vincent Lewis, you try and keep it together and, and, and hope that the natural order of things, he saw Henry Schumann got beaten yesterday, his run doesn't seem to be as good as it was in the other rounds, and hope that four or five people can sneak in and, and outkick him. Henry's not renowned for his sprint finish. Vincent knows he can outkick anyone in this field, so keeping the pace as slow as possible, I believe, actually plays into Vincent Lewis's hands. We'll see exactly how this plays out. Henry Schumann was complaining a little bit last night of some soreness or some tightness up in his rib cage. We saw him holding it a little bit yesterday as he was trying to stay with the leaders and a fast pace it was at the end of stage three of the Eliminator. So you can see Hayden Wild on the left of the screen in the back already with his swim goggles on. Starting to plan for this second swim. Hayden, not a big swimmer. He wants to get through transition quick, try and get in that water as close to the front as he possibly can and have athletes swim around him over the next 300 in, that, in the water. Polianski, a lonely figure, the Russian at this point as he runs down the back side of our course. Oliver Turner is behind him and you think those two are the ones who are going to see the yellow flag at the end of the run. At the front though, as we get the pictures off our motorbike, there is a bunch and all of them, Bar Hayden Wild, have got their swim caps on already and there they go on. Berger as well has managed to make it through the first run so he'll be boosted by that even with the state of his feet as they head through and start the second of three consecutive triathlons. Tommy Zafiris is next. And Hauser looks much more comfortable today than he did yesterday when it reached this stage. And he's, he's got a massive swim on him, so he's very, very comfortable in his head right now. He knows no one's going to swim around him. He's going to enter the water first, set the pace, control the tempo. It's the best place to be. Mislachuk, he said before he didn't want to see himself at the front of the race. He's sitting in second position at the moment, which is a good sign. Tyler Missile Launch, we decided to call him after his performance yesterday. I was speaking to him at breakfast. Is that right? Yeah. What was the two of you decided that? Yeah. Didn't? I said, how are you ready? You're ready to go. And he said, I, I feel like I'm a missile about to launch. I said, oh, that rhymes with his surname. It doesn't rhyme with his surname sure at all. It does. Missile Launch. 
if that right, I don't know I don't what know. situation in I'm which that rapper. Was. <laughs> Leo Bergier there, Ben Canute, and Richard Murray ran right onto the back of that group. Great, great transitions, and Andrea Schilling. Oh, Andrea Schilling in 13th. Tommy, Tommy Zafiris, who can swim. to swim his way back. Very much so as they come around the outside of that boat there, and here comes the dreaded yellow so Tom for Murray. Oliver Turner, who has done his very best and Mark Yu as well from Hong Kong so two very different athletes from very different backgrounds and they have given absolutely everything Mark Yu and let's have a look at Johnny Brownlee here he's just rolled his ankle which hurts and he's gone down on his knees and gone into the water we're just going to have to keep an eye on that for Jonathan Brownlee. He just question. went down that step and rolled his ankle, and he's that could cruel his chances. He's still swimming there in fifth position. You see him in the red jersey. So he's got 300 metres to deal with that in his head, but he's not going to know any damage until he hits dry land. There's so, 15 still in the field. Yeah, 15. And they're just about all in that group there. So the 80-second rule not into effect at the moment. Well, this is a safe place for me, but if you see that green jersey at the back, Richard Murray, not renowned for his swimming. He's a four-time duathlon world champion, which is swim, which is run bike. He's starting to drift a little bit further back than he'd like to be. He's got Tommy Zafaris, who can swim, who entered the water last. He'll move past Richard Murray. I'm pretty confident about that. But the two of them, two at the back, will be eliminated after this swim. Richard Murray still in mathematical contention to win this whole thing. As Dorian Connix just finds himself hitting the... Uh, and Hayden Wiles back there. So Murray, an elimination here will end his chances of a podium he had a tough day yesterday false started off the pontoon hit the water even though he didn't get any advantage he hit the water before the official start so he got a five second penalty in transition and that put paid to his chances of a top five finish as matt hauser continues to lead this one Alongside him, Schumann and Lewis, so exalted company for the Australian. There's no pace on at the moment. You can see them grouped together like that. I think it's they were at 80% effort there. Henry Schumann with a beautiful swim technique. Vincent Lewis sitting right off his shoulder in the, in the best position to ever swim if you want to get a draft. On his other side is Matt Hauser. Well, that's right, Igor Polianski, yes. Past one of Macca's boats is Igor Polianski. Right at the top of pitch, you're just turning the boy. So this will be the end of his race, you would think. Which means someone on the back here, and I did get a glimpse of a Australian. Schilling, potentially? No, well, I saw it look like an Australian or a New Zealand flag, which means to me it's either Ryan Bailey or, or Hayden, Hayden Wiles drifted a little bit further back, which puts him in danger. He's not renowned for his big swim. I'm looking at the back of the field right now, and that looks like an Australian or a New Zealand flag. There's Polyansky at the very top, but who's there second from last? Very difficult to tell. First out of the water, though, will be Schumann and Lewis, who are just stuck together like glue, a little bit like Spivey and Clammer. And Johnny Brownlee looks to be OK. So let's have a He's look. He's moving at all right. Brownlee, Somberg and Canute, who's always there or thereabouts. The two Canadians, Sharp and Mish, yeah. Chuck, both train together. They're out together. Oh, yes. Berger, Connix, two Frenchmen, Zafiris, Schilling, Murray survives, and Hay Hayden Wild Hayden will Wild be. is out. Hayden Wild will be showing the flag, Willie. He is a contender as well, and he here is it is. Out. The flag is given, and that's disappointing wow. for Hayden Wild. Wow, sixth overall in Jersey. He had a great Malta in Mallorca. He's improved across the course of this series, and that's a disappointing result for the 21-year-old. And that throws things up for the overall day for Vincent Louis. He needed Hayden Wild in that mix to move the round around today in order for those points to, to help him take out Henry Schumann, so that's a big loss. We do have a scoring system giving scores out of 10 ranking against other athletes for each of the disciplines, and Hayden Wild has a 5.6 in the swim, which is the lowest of the top 14. So it really caught up with him there compared to an 8.5 and 8.2 for the bike and the run. So another little learning experience on the course of what will be a great career. Ben Canute is the man you want at the front of your chasing pack, no doubt. And Igor Polianski, who's had a tough weekend, well, thankfully for him, in some respects, it'll be over now. So, number 53, Hayden Wild. That is a huge turn of events. He finished third overall in the Eliminator yesterday. And yet he finds himself 
fifth position in the championship. Eliminated early. He's been the real find of the series, to be quite honest. And with the double points on today, that's going to move him around for the contracts. Should, should still be okay. He'll be okay. It's hard but to tell because people behind him, like Matt Leo Sharp. Berger, Matt Canute, uh, Ben Canute, sorry, Tyler Mislachuk. Who had a great day yesterday and is right yeah. up there today. Matt Sharp is having a fantastic weekend of racing. Yeah, Matt points. Sharp is looking to move into the top 10 too. So there's going to be a lot of movement. The top 10 at the end of this race in championship points will get a contract. That's guaranteed cash, guaranteed arrival of the races. Everything put on in Super League style and the chance to race for an increased prize money pot too. That's a big, big ticket for these athletes. But at the front, it's all about the championship. Hauser in third behind Henry Schumann and Vincent Lewis. A couple of Frenchmen in Bergier and Connix there. Both with great pedigrees. Gregorian Connix, the 25-year-old Olympian. Junior and under 23 world champion in 2014, 2015. He'll be racing Bali. And we're hearing now that Hayden Wild is being carried off. There he is. So the heat catching up to Hayden Wild. It was an uncharacteristic performance out of the water. So we'll keep you updated on how Hayden Wild is. He'll go into the ice bath, trying to drop his core temperature. Everything going to plan though for Schumann and Lewis as they fight it out for $100,000 and $50,000 for first and second. Third place, Jonathan Brownlee's fighting with Richard Murray for that one. At the moment, Brownlee looks the goods there if his ankle can hold. There is Murray with Zephyrus right behind and Schilling behind him, and I think that's the back of our race at this point. Leo Bergier and Connix went through that chicane so well. They, were, they went in the five or six seconds back and slid out the other side, halved that distance. They just magnificent bike handling skills. As you can see, Vincent Lewis has taken off the gas. Johnny's not too happy about that move straight around him. Johnny knows he needs to put some time into these guys. He's sitting third overall in terms of points. He had a win yesterday. He wants to back it up with another one, take the 20,000 for the round win and put himself right in contention for a podium place overall as well. So it's an ever-changing matrix here. Matt Hauser back again. Johnny's had to work just a touch harder after a slower start on the bike the first time around. As they head across the black carpet and out of transition once again. The second bike of three, the third lap of five in this sector. Schomburg, Schumann, Lewis, Mislachuk, Berger, Canute, Sharp, Connix rounds out your top ten. There's hardly anything to put between them. Uh, but there's a bit of a gap back there. There's a theorist, Murray, and Schilling now. Two of these men, it looks like, will go home at the end of this bike lap. So three into two does not go, and Richard Murray does not want to be one of them. Moves all those points he can get. He can't get eliminated here. He needs to move up just to stay into the run to get the vital finishing position. Through the Singapore chicane, out the front of the W Hotel and onto Ocean Way and the tarmac. Our back three head through the chicane as well. Don't want to be at the back when you come through that area and get slowed down. Schilling, we don't know if he knows, he's had a, the ability to tell whether he is at the back of the race. He'll know there's no one directly behind him. But there's not a lot of places to find out exactly where you're placed. Johnny Brownlee leads after a win yesterday. Jonas Schomburg, as we said, having a great weekend. And there's the gap back to our trailing three. 13 left in this race. It's now an odd number. With 10 gone from our 23 who started. They'll start to pick it up now. This is a business end. This next run in particular, this lap and the next run, as they start to move to positions, they know the back of the group is starting to move closer to them as the two behind them are eliminated. And this next run will be brutal. This is when you're going to start to see things unwind. Just looking at the look on Doran Connix's face there, I think he's dig really deep. He's burned a lot of his matches, Doran Connix. You know he can run us up 30, 10K though, so he knows how to run his way out of trouble. Schomburg at the front from Brownlee, and now Mislachuk is up there. And there's Matt Sharp, who ran to a fifth yesterday. A great result for him too. Dorian Connex is just not, seemed to not be able to move up at all. Out of every corner, he just gets dropped off the back. He spends the entire straights riding back onto the back of that wheel. His mouth's been open since he got on the bike in the first round through. And uh, 
he, he would do it a lot easier if he stood up with the third or fourth wheel. Well, he actually had this exact same, he had a complaint about that this morning, the exact same position he was in yesterday. Yeah. Comes through the chicane, gets caught up with everybody, and then watches them string out along the back and have to work as hard as he possibly can. You'll watch it here in the distance, he's already off the back trying to fight to get back on. As they go around that corner, it opens up again, he sprints again, it just burns so much for the next run. And it burns so much. There he is in the middle of your screen as he's trying to find a way through and he just can't. There's not a lot of width in this. And he goes straight across to the other side trying to find a way out. And he just looks like he's having a tough time out there. And he's, he's got upside up. the inside of Matt Sharp, but our back group has managed to this tack will be on. A, this will be a bunch sprint. Oh, there's a crash. Oh, someone's down and it is Matt Hauser. He's had an accident. He gets up quickly, but he's only got one lap to get back on. If his bike is all right, he's going to be eliminated, definitely. So Richard Murray's going to slide up here past. Is he, though? There's still one more oh, to be lap eliminated. To there's still one lap to go, I think. Zephyrus is off the back. Zephyrus is not aware that now there's a lap to go. There's a lap to go. Luckily. But Matt Hauser, well, it's going to have to be the ride of his life to get onto the back of that after that accident at the back of Dorian Connix and Tommy Zephyrus, and one of them is going to be eliminated because Matt Hauser will hopefully get a replay of that. Has hit the tarmac. Leo Berger now in the lead. He wanted to make it to the second run. He's going to do that. Matt House is out. He's not going to ride back onto this group. He's eliminated. So one of these at the back is going to get eliminated. So do we see them move up? What's going to happen here? Richard Murray will not be one of them. I, I guarantee you. He's too clever. He's too smart. He'll slide up. I think Dorian Connix could find himself in a bit of trouble. He's at the back. Or, or Zephyrus. Zephyrus. Could be Zephyrus. See Richard there Murray's there, moved up. The American at, uh, flag. Poor Matt House is going on a warm down run. He doesn't know it. He looked to be on song today. Yeah, disappointing for him. And he's just Ooh, come he's out the there wheel. and he's actually saved it reasonably well to not hit the barrier there. I'm not sure whether he got touched by somebody else. Yeah, I think he's clipped the wheel. I think it was Matt Sharp who went to the other side of the road. So he's probably clipped him and he's down. His day is over. What a shame. That is a big, big shame. Finished 11th yesterday. Yeah, he's he's on the front. Such a strong competitor, Matt Housie. He will not be happy with that. The same goes for Hayden Wild. Is that Andre Schilling's off the back now? It does appear that way. I can't see Schilling there. No, no Schilling's there. Schilling. Schilling's there. Who is oh, this at the back? Connix. Yeah, it's Connix. He's really spent himself to try and stay on, and he will be eliminated as they cross the line, the Frenchman. So strong in mixed team relay. Part of the team that won gold in Hamburg in 2018. Part of the European Championship team as well. He's had a great season last year and his race and his time in Super League for this season is at an end and out we go for the Schomburg. second run Schomburg with a massive transition so unlucky for Matt Hauser yeah. and you can see it all over his face he was in great position and he's very disappointed what a shame Jonas Schomburg striding out of the front and pushing the pace ahead of Vincent Louis. Johnny Brownlee. Johnny Henry Brownlee. Schumann. Leo Berger with shoes on. And Berger. Richard Murray. I'm very impressed, though, by what Jonas Schomburg, he's promised a lot. He's really put it together in this round. But he's been getting better across the course of the season. Andreas Schilling. Tommy Zafaris. Yeah, Tommy Zafiris is finding the run tough, but Schomburg, he was one of the qualified through Poznan. Of course, we have a qualifier in Bali coming up next month for athletes who want to take some spots in the 2019-20 season. Our top 10 at the end of this championship standings will take a contract. There will be more spots on the line at each of three qualifying events. Look up all the details on superleaguetriathlon.com if you want to find a way into this field. If you think you can cut the pace, Bali will go to Poznan again later in the year in Poland and then yeah. finally to Canada Ben Canute fighting with Matt Sharp Richard and Tyler Mislachuk and Richard Murray's at the back there's 11 in the field as it stands Richard Murray looks to be in a lot of pain that, that foot starting to play up you see the grimace yeah, Leo Berger as we say he wanted to get the second run because he thought his feet were too busted up to survive it at least get to there to save some points to stay inside the top 10. But he's out there on the second round, and Tommy Zafiris is our back marker. So he'll make it to 11th, which is an incredibly creditable performance for a man who came into the series halfway through by showing us exactly how fast he could swim.
finished ninth in Majorca, and he's had a very good run here too. So Schomburg leads, a 24-year-old from Germany. Raced a whole bunch in 2018, nearly more than anyone else. Finished 10th in the European Championships in Glasgow. He was part of the mixed team relay. German team he finished sixth in Hamburg. A couple of good World Cup results as well. He's been moving well all weekend, hasn't he, Jonas? He's shown a lot of promise. He's got a big swim. He rode so well yesterday. He's run right where it needs to be. He's been talked about as a promising young German for many years. His father's a former professional. And it's the photo he'd love to have right now leading. Johnny Brownlee, Vincent Lewis, and Henry Skirman. Absolutely. That one up on the colours of the rainbow behind yeah. him there. The pink leader, the run split leader, and the swim split leader. And behind them, Leo Berger as well, who's stuck into the top five, despite the fact he has no soles on the bottom of his feet. And Richard Murray has stopped. Yeah. He's done. He's done for the day. His ankle, he was worried it was going to hold up. He hasn't done a lot of running. And him and Tommy are going to jog around for a victory lap before they're eliminated. And we end up with nine left in the back of the picture there. The fiancé of Henry Schumann, Franzel Allen, just urging her partner on. She knows how much rides on this. $100,000 potential at the end if they can stick together, those two, and Ben Canute in that running style he has, just muscling his way around. Andreas Schilling now on the bubble, or will be when they head back into the water with Tommy Zafiris and Richard Murray. Our two next athletes likely to be eliminated. At the front, though, a group of five. Schomburg, Lewis, Brownlee, Schumann, Berger, two Frenchmen, a Brit, a South African, and a German. And it was the Canadians that were so strong yesterday back there with Ben Canute. We saw them go through transition just in the back of screen. Tyler was thinking he'd win this round. He's obviously a little fatigued. He wouldn't let a gap like this open up if he was feeling in this race. This group's going to stay away, in my opinion, which is which does not play well for Vincent Lewin overall. Unless Henry Schumann's at the back of it. Very true. But at the moment, our three potential championship contenders are all in the top five. Yes. Johnny Brownlee. They're withdrawn. Are they not eliminated? That's a question. Well, if they've just withdrawn, that suddenly makes the two at the back of this, the two Canadians and Ben Canute, vulnerable for elimination. At the end of this run, at the end of this run, just been withdrawn, not eliminated. So two men at the end of this run, at the back of this pack, will be eliminated, and it'll come from Andreas Schilling potentially, as well as one from Tyler Mislachuk, Matt Sharp, and Ben Canute. And they will not be aware of that right now. No, they won't, because they will have known those two are behind, but they would expect them to be eliminated on the next lap. But a withdrawal is not an elimination, and that is why the enduro is such a tough beast to tame. You see Andreas Schilling looking back to see who's behind him. He does not know they've been, they've been eliminated. He's going to get the yellow flag at the end of this run. He'll be shocked about that. And there will be a sprint, although it won't, may not be a sprint. It may just be three guys running to the line and not realising that one of them is going home. I expect to see the coach of both Matt Sharp and Tyler Mislachok and Jonathan Hall roaring across this fan zone to fill those two athletes in the back of screen. That is confirmed. They were injury withdrawals. Tommy Zafiris and Richard Murray, there will be two more eliminations and it will come from those four men you can see in focus there. Ben Canute of America, so good. Three-time national champion, races all distances from half Ironman to super sprint like this and does it with heart and class. Matt Sharp and Tyler Mislachuk, second and fifth. Yesterday, and Andreas Schilling as well, but a, a pack of four now, so someone's dropped a little off the pace. I think that's Berger, is it? No, it's Schomburg, I think, as Berger is staying very, very close to these three. Jonas Schomburg has I think a you're right. Yep. He has a swim. I think he can swim back up if he gets a quick transition, but that's been the class of the uh, those three on screen. With Berger being a real standout in the series too, but those three on screen have been the class of the last two rounds without question. And the two there in blue and, and pink. They've just had a, a rivalry throughout this series and it's been remarkable to watch. Vincent Lewis, 75 championship points. Schumann, 63 points. Murray is out now. He was on 48. Johnny Brownlee on 46. Hayden Wilde is out on 34, but Leo Berger is there on 32. So, chances to move up in the podium and take a bigger slice of 1.5 million US dollars. And, Sharp. and Matt Sharp is the one who wow. is unlucky on that one and I'm not sure whether that was a sprint or whether that was surprised by the yellow flag title of Mislachuk survives as did Ben, as Canute. Did ben Canute, you're right beautiful shots from our drone here of Sentosa Cove uh, host partners and they have been fantastic it is a beautiful place to race 
as long as you don't mind one million percent humidity which i very much do that sprint's brought tyler missed the chop back into play then i think he's been told at the end of that straight that he's up for elimination he doesn't move up he's had to work all four of them have worked and suddenly he's back within this group he's in striking distance he swims well but it was drifting back on that run but suddenly he's he's just off jonas schomburg Brownlee was very tentative on that step there and dive in and that's just cost him a little bit of time and he's got to work to just get back on the feet there of Vincent Lewis, which he will do. Ben Canute on the back who can swim as well. So there is seven of our athletes. We've got a couple more at the back in Mislachuk. Yes, they're swimming for their life here. Seven, that is our seven. That is everybody in the water. That means there'll be one elimination to make six at the end yes. of this. So, and then our Super Six will go through to the last two disciplines to decide not only our race winners, not only our round winners, but our championship winners. And at the moment, it's Henry Schumann who looks in control. Vincent Lewis behind him. Schumann will... Well, Brownlee at the moment will be likely the one it, to take the round win if it stays one, two, three, the three of them, because Brownlee won yesterday and took 25 round points. He knows that Fourth too. place for Schumann. So if Schumann finishes fourth and first, uh, it's I, Brownlee, if, if he finishes third in that group, he'll still take the round win. We'll have a look at the sprint that Matt Sharp lost out on between Mislachuk, Knud and himself in just a second. Here it is. So our four coming across the line. And then it was a sprint at the back. Knud, no, Schomburg's there, there in fifth. Here's a sprint. There's Mislachuk. Here's a sprint. Mislachuk knew it. He sprinted to the line. Knud knew it. And then it got very, very close. But Schilling couldn't find Knud. And both Schilling and Sharp were gone in the end. So they knew... They knew the state of play, and our top three have slightly gapped our next three. Berger there on the feet of Jonas Schomburg, which is not a bad place to be to drag yourself up. Knut in the silver, you can see right there next to Berger. And behind them is Mislachuk, who's going to need to do some work to avoid elimination. But out the front is Vincent Lewis. I think he realises at this point that he's going to be hard to shake Henry Schumann. Johnny Brownlee's just got the box seat. He's swimming straight off the back of the two best swimmers in the sport. A comfortable sit. He'll get a free ride on this run. He's going to save his legs for a big run. Vincent Lewis got a lot fresher legs without doing yesterday's eliminator. By staying third, he wins the day. That's right. If he stays third, Johnny Brownlee, he wins the round. He'll pick up 20,000 US dollars. He doesn't need to beat these two. But in terms of championship, it's all up for grabs between these three. They're the three that can potentially win it at the moment. You'd have to put your money on Henry Schumann, who had a decent finish yesterday after Vincent Lewis's puncture. I'm trying to see who's drifted to the back of this swim, because one of them are going to go to leave our Super 6. There'll be one elimination. Well, Schomburg's, I think, in fourth position as it stands. Berger, perhaps, behind him. That leaves Mislachuk and Knut. The Canadian and the American. I think that is Schomburg in fourth. Yeah, that's, that's so Schomburg doesn't have a swim cap on. He's the man sans swim cap. Looking in the rule book, is that legal? Um, I'm not sure. I'm assuming so. I think it's Mr. Chock. No, it's, no, it's it is Schomburg. Mr. Chock in the back. And Berger, Canute, and it's going to be Mislachuk. He's sprinting up as fast as he can to try and take. Canute, but he's not going to get there. He is not going to get there, and that hurts. Tyler Mislachuk had a great result the second yesterday, but couldn't quite bridge the gap. And it's a game of inches, Super League triathlon. Of that, there is no doubt. Brownlee out onto the bike. That group of three remain. Pink, blue, and red. Our championship contenders leading this race. The last one in season 2018-19 before our qualifiers begin to fill the spots on the roster for 2019-20, which begins in Jersey again in September. This group of three are gone. Ben Canute now, the screen at the back there. He'll ride as hard as he possibly can. He only knows one speed. Ben Canute, head down, Schomburg flat out. Schomburg wants that wheel quickly. Leo Berger, technically beautiful on a bike. 
has done He'll superbly given his injuries to be there in the top six. He'll be very happy with that. All right, we're hearing that despite the fact that if he went into the water without the swim cap on, that would have been a DQ, but the swim cap came off in the water. Jonas Schomburg attempted to put it back on. It wasn't possible. He's okay. He carries on. So, good news for German fans. He's in fifth position as it stands, with Leo Berger right behind him and working hard to get onto the tail of Ben Knut, who will muscle his way up if he can. Two groups of three left on now this eighth of nine disciplines. The last race of Super League 2018-19. Our champions to be crowned. Three and three down the back straight on Ocean Way here in Sentosa Cove once again. Johnny Brownlee looks a lot calmer than he has in our other races. He seemed to have a lot of urgency when he raced in the past and made a few mistakes. He knows these two in front are dictating terms and have all the entire league. He drew a lot of confidence from yesterday's Spuds big sprint finish. I'd like him to do very little and come to a shootout between these three. Three on three. There seems to be no urgency. They know this is a super six. These three away against three against three. There's no urgency here. Henry Skuman sat on the front for the last lap of the bike. Vincent Louis has been content. Johnny Brownlee, I don't think, will move up at all until it matters, until it's needed to. Getting a lot of fluid. The temperature's definitely dropped. It's later in the evening. And it's the business end now. Tyler Mislachuk still perhaps in the box seat to finish on the podium. Seventh and second, might, that, that might be enough with Vincent Lewis. Despite taking a, this is the round podium I'm talking about, yes. despite taking the uh, decent points, at least top three points for Vincent Lewis. He only took one yesterday, so that almost puts him out of contention. And Johnny Brownlee has already taken 25 from yesterday and Skirman 16, so you'd think that those two will be somewhere on the round podium. 20,000 US dollars on offer for the round, 15,000 and 10,000. But the big checks come out after that. Here is the chasing group, Berger now leading. He's done better than he thought he would considering his injuries. He's into the sixth, uh, the eighth, sorry, of nine di disciplines. He's got a run to get through, he's in the Super Six. It's been a great weekend of racing for, for Leo Berger, no matter where he finishes today. But these have been the power three of the entire series, with the only missing one being Richard Murray. Yeah. And uh, Henry Schumann is just so evenly perfect at the three disciplines of triathlon. He's always there. He's got such a powerful swim. He's so fast through transition. His bike's remarkable. His skills are impeccable. His run's marvellous. He's just... <laughs> He's so, good. he's so good to watch race. Look how calm he is. He sits so well on a bike. He's a silent assassin. There's so much more power you see in Vincent Louis who's sitting on his wheel. And Johnny Brownlee, geez, he's, he's Palomar, but say in, it in all. in this group, if you're new to watching triathlon, you've got the world number two in the pink, Vincent Lewis. You've got the Commonwealth Games gold medalist and Rio bronze medalist in Henry Schoeman of South Africa. And you've got the Rio silver medalist and London bronze medalist in Jonathan Brownlee. He's also got a, a couple of Commonwealth Games gold. Yeah, and also he was the 2012 world champion exactly. and two-time world sprint try champion. So there's not better res there's not many better resumes in sport than these three men when it comes to triathlon. That has been the cream of this sport for the last few years. The only one missing is, is actually Johnny's brother, Alistair. But that is triathlon of the now, right there on screen. That is the talent, and they're the three there. You're going to look for at the Tokyo Olympic Games to pick out a gold medal. And Super League, a big part of the trip to Tokyo, given the distances on offer in 2020, but refining their craft and their art here on the streets of Singapore are these three. And there is a big crowd now as the temperature drops enough to come out in the open. Watching the very best do battle. What could be better than that on a Sunday afternoon here in Singapore as they head through transition once again. And the gap just widening as these three work together. And Henry Schumann, if it finishes like this, will be your championship winner. Johnny 
having some problems with his suit there. James Zip, huh? But Johnny sat third. Well, this is, they've sat like this for the entire bike ride. Vincent Louis, I think, has probably done 400 metres of the bike riding early on. The, early on. But Johnny has not moved off Vincent's wheel, saving the legs. Henry Skewman has just slid through the entire course. There seems to be no power put down, but there's... about surviving without crashing and coming down to his final run. Well, they seem to be content to stay in this order and of course Vincent wants Henry to do all the work because Vincent knows that he's got the best kick in triathlon if it comes down to a running race. It's happened a couple of times to Schumann across the course of the rounds that it comes down to a running race between the two of them. In Jersey Henry tried to go a little bit early to see to test the waters if you like with about half a lap left and Vince did the job, he did it again up the hill in Malta in that famous foot race between the two of them. This one is shaping up once again. Of course, Johnny Brownlee is back in all sorts of form yeah. and held off Tyler Mislachuk with a great sprint finish. So if it comes down to that, it is going to be one of the great finishes. We've already seen one absolutely unbelievable finish in the women's with Cassandra Bograd winning in a photo finish and earning a podium spot for the championship and 25,000 US dollars by about a hundredth of a second over Katie Zafiris who won the championship. You cannot get better than that. The bell lap for the bike in the eighth of nine disciplines, and it is Schumann, Lewis, and Brownlee. The best we've got on the roster in Super League. And there's the gap between the others. You can see at the top of your screen are fighting it out for fourth through sixth. The three of them there doing battle. Of course, fourth, fifth, and sixth, all important in terms of their positioning. They could dictate how Vincent Lewis finishes in terms of the round and therefore the championship as well. So the minor placings, we've got our calculators out ready to make sure we get it right as soon as possible. But if at the moment, the only certainty is if Henry Scooman wins this race, he will be our champion. If Johnny Brownlee finishes third, he, I think he's got the round locked up. Yeah. To be fair. If it stays together like this, he has the round locked up. He could just cruise around to, and finish third. Obviously, it's not a cruise. There's three guys behind him who are excellent, and he's having a look back there right looking, now. He's been looking back the entire last two laps of this bike ride. It's like, that says he feels very good. He's checking where the others are behind him. He doesn't feel that the pace is on up front, so you tend to look back to make sure that gap doesn't close. If you're a, if you're a gambling person, three's better to race than six. And now I think three's better to race than six if you're not a gambling yeah, person definitely. also. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> For both gamblers and non-gamblers. For non-gamblers, again, Less just common sense. Out there. Yeah, I guess it's just common sense. <laughs> Three's better. Yes, okay. <laughs> but, but you might love gambling too. We don't know. We move on. Vincent Lewis comes off the bike. Schumann in second and Brownlee third. And they've got 1,800 metres between now and the end of the Super League triathlon season. What a journey it's been to Jersey, Malta, Mallorca, and now I'm already getting ready to stand up out of my seat. Yeah, I can Brownlee. feel this is going to be an absolute cracker of a finish. Brownlee comes out third from transition. He had a great run yesterday. He's feeling confident. But he's a couple of seconds back on Vincent Lewis, who knows that potentially the fate of the championship is out of his hands, but the fate of this race certainly is not. And he said he was going to run angry. We'll see how much anger he's got left after seven transitions. No, eight transitions now and eight legs. And there are the splits, 16 seconds across our six that are left. Schumann knows that he can sit in. Schomburg, Berger and Knut. Berger's feet are destroyed and he's right there. Right there, Vincent Louis. Very courageous. And Louis, Lewis knows that he's got his, the only fate he's got in his hands at this point is the fate of this race. Johnny Brown is coming after him. Why not? They've got nothing to lose. They've had head-to-heads for the majority of their career. And in, in more recent times, Vincent Lewis has got one better over Johnny Brownlee. So it'll be a fantastic way to end a round for Johnny Brownlee to, to get a win up on Vincent Lewis, knowing that Vincent Lewis didn't even race yesterday. So I think Schumann's still got the championship in the bag. If he finishes third, we don't know that for sure. 
It's not we don't know that for sure, but what we do know is Johnny Brownlee at this point has the round in the bag if he can indeed stay in this top three. And I'd love to see him track down Vincent Lewis and make it a foot race towards the end. But he looks so strong, the Frenchman, of course. He didn't have much of a race yesterday compared to the other two. So he's feeling a little bit fresher. And that freshness is showing now as he runs away with it. He'll be very disappointed by what happened yesterday. Completely out of his hands, the puncture. And the only way to really come back from that is to leave your best racing out there on the course. At the next opportunity, and that's what he's doing, the Frenchman. That's the old running soul of Johnny Brownlee we used to see when he was running the Olympic silver and bronze medals with his brother. He he stands up a lot taller than I've seen him in, in the early parts of this series. He, he just seems flat-footed. He's, he's got that bounce back. He's running a lot taller. He seems a lot more confident. And despite Vincent moving away with fresh legs, I think Johnny's got this in control. You think so? He's got, he's got control over Henry Skewman. I don't think he's got, got Vincent Louis, but I don't think uh, Henry's going to move up in any way. Jonathan Brownlee. Can Johnny Brownlee bridge this gap? The stride of Vincent Lewis was just eating up the pavement here in Singapore. There's one lap to go to crown our race round and championship winners. The crowd five deep along the finishing stretch. As Johnny Brownlee comes around the corner and sees that gap, Lewis will turn through transition and get a chance to see where his opponents are. Scoobin right there. Scoobin, I think, race is potentially finished. He may have crunched the numbers and knows he's okay. We don't know. He's still closer than I thought, Henry. He looked to be looking over his shoulder, checking where fourth position was. I'd love to know who that is. Is that Leo Bergier back there, or is it is it Ben Canoot? Just uh, Vince Louis was leaving a couple of bottled waters on the ground, like a couple of shells in Mario Kart, just for the others to run over. 56 minutes, so it's going to take an hour just about for them to get around, which is about the same as what it took the women to do the same thing. Both very quick races. Brownlee and Schumann now five and eight seconds back, and you can just see how much Lewis has put the hammer down. It was 16 seconds off the bike. One lap later, the gap back to Schomburg has doubled to Berger 32 in seconds. Bergier in fourth with Canute fifth. And it's Schomburg who's dropped four seconds back off Ben Canute, which would be a magnificent race for Ben, and an even better race for Leo Bergier. Can Henry Schumann track down Jonathan Brownlee? Now that gap is a little smaller than the one out to Vince Lewis. Not sure that's possible. Berger continues. It's the third time he's gone out to run. He didn't even want to do it once. He pulled out yesterday when they got to the top ten, the third stage of the Eliminator. And that look on Ben Canute's face, it looks like he's struggling, but that's a look he has on his face every time he runs. He's just a he's warrior. He's in the red zone all the time. He constantly is. He's always chasing, he's always pushing, he's always aggressive, and he's always there. He's, he's as tough as nails. This is a control performance by Vincent Lewis. It's in the bag. He knows it. Vincent Lewis needing to finish as high up in the round as he possibly can, take the maximum in the race, sorry, take the maximum points hall to give him the best round position. And until we know that, until we know four, fifth and sixth placements, we won't know exactly where they stand in the championship. Jonathan Brownlee will be your round winner, no matter where he finishes in this top three. So a great return to form from the Englishman, one of the most popular triathletes on the circuit. Plenty of social media on how much they enjoyed his race yesterday and to back it up with maybe a second position is a great weekend out for Vincent Lewis he was angry about what happened yesterday and he's taking his anger out on the back end of this run course to remind everyone just how quick he is it's what he's done all season when it comes to the business end he has shut everybody out Johnny Brownlee, he's had a check for Henry Skirman He'll finish second with a, with a round win for Johnny Brownlee. It will be Vincent Lewis who gives himself a maximum 25 points. He has to await other results to see where it finishes him in the championship and in the round. But he can do no more than to win this race, and he's done exactly that. Vincent Lewis, a bit of redemption for him after some bad luck yesterday. Congratulations to the Frenchman. He's been so good across the course.
of this series and Johnny Brownlee backs up his win yesterday with a very, very good second and he will win the round. And Henry Schoeman comes in in a little bit of pain too. He's really pushed himself hard to finish in third position. He had some niggles he's worked through as well. It's very hot out there still. And it's possible that Vincent Lewis may have still won overall. It's still up in the air. We're waiting to on confirmation of final results. He doesn't know. And it depends on the finishing positions of our athletes coming through the finishing line is Ben Canute. Every single one of these athletes has given everything. He left it all out there. Jonas Schomburg with a great performance. His best performance of the series, no doubt. He'll be waiting for those points right now, Vincent Lewis. He was absolutely shattered yesterday. Yeah. We saw it at the top of the show. A puncture from a tiny little staple. On the third, or second of five bike laps, he ran, he rode three laps on the bike with a flat tyre and ended up 17th. But what more can you do than to come out and win by 30 metres over Jonathan Brownlee, who won yesterday, just to remind everyone exactly what kind of pedigree you have, and that's what he did. It's a great performance from Vincent Lewis. We, we had him on before the show. He looked he looked flat, he looked down, he knew there was a lot on the line. He'd be waiting nervously now on the on the round results to work out if he's won the championship. He's been the most dominant athlete of the entire league. I think he's down there with Annie Emerson right now. If they're ready, I suppose we'll throw down to them as he gets a hug from Matt Hauser, who was very, very unlucky, but we'll go to Annie right now. We all made that look easy. You had to run incredibly hard. I knew you sensed the danger from Johnny Brownlee, but what a race you made up for that disappointment yesterday. How do you feel? Yeah, obviously I've been better than yesterday. That's a great feeling to win. Uh, I think I play really well tactically. Uh, just try to slow down Henry as much as I can. But he knew, he knew I would do that, so he was a really tough opponent. Uh, Johnny was really, really hard to beat. I tried to start really fast at the last turn to try to make them a bit like uh, on the red zone. I think it's pretty tough when you already did three races. So yeah, my, my target was to just make them suffer from the start to the finish. Okay, they've got to do, they've got to do the numbers still, unconfirmed where you're going to finish in the overall series, but we think it's going to be close for you to finish at the top. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I mean, first or second, uh, I had a great race. Uh, the form is there. I'm pretty happy. Henry is a great guy. So if, if he wins the series, I'm happy for him. If Johnny wins the series, I'm happy for him. So. Yeah, everything's fine. Uh, yeah, one, two, three, doesn't matter. I've just provide a great show to the crowd. That's all we want, I think. Certainly, uh, Henry and Johnny pushed you right to the end and perhaps made this the, the toughest enduro race that you've taken on so far. Oh, yeah, sure. That's, that's way tougher than, than the one in Jersey. Uh, I, I, I feel pretty tired. I think maybe the hit, I, I don't know. I, I have to work a bit more on this. But yeah, they, they're great athletes. And they both are. Olympic medals around the neck, so <laughs> you, you cannot hope for an easy race. But yeah, I, I'm really glad to win. Uh, we got the first WTS in two weeks, so it's a confidence boost, I think. I've got something to tell you. You are the champion, Vincent. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, it's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't really know what to say. Yesterday, I was just like, okay, stay focused, just racing. That's what you do the best and race from the from the start to finish and yeah winning the series is, 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 is like awesome yeah I, I want to thank everyone uh, my coach Joel Field, Drew Box, uh, my physio Pepe, my parents, my girlfriend Tello and my, my manager Julian they, they're all incredibly a, a big big support for me and yeah thank, th thanks everyone uh, I, I don't know what to say so, so sorry. <laughs> could, could you honestly have believed this morning when you woke up today that this was going to be the end result that you are the Super League champion uh, no honestly I woke up this morning and uh, my, my coach and my co assistant coach asked me if they if they want if I want them to do the match for the for the title and I said no no I just want to race I want to win the race and that, that's the only thing I can I can do and let's let's see what happened after but yeah I was here for winning uh, the race and the, and the championship so I did both no, honestly, when I woke up this morning, I really did not expect that. That's crazy. I really don't want to reflect on what happened yesterday, but, but I wonder, the fresh legs, we know what a finish you've got on the run, that, that's for certain, but did the fresh legs 
help you today against Henry and Jonathan? Yeah, uh, I honestly did not feel really good the world race. Uh, maybe because of the heat. Maybe because we, I think we really start fast even for the first leg. But yeah, obviously, I mean, those guys raced three times yesterday. I only raced once. So it's a bad thing maybe for a good thing today because no one knows. Maybe I would blow up today if I if I had to do the world race yesterday. So just keep the entertainment. So I think that's a good that's a good thing. <laughs> and it's so tactical. There's absolutely no room for error. Um, error. How do you keep it together? Yeah, that's really tactical. Matt has a crash just in front of me, so it can change everything in a second. We saw that yesterday with the flat tire. There is no room for error, as you said. But I, I try to stay really focused, just say, okay, Henry is there, Johnny is there, don't push too hard, let them work. And you just have to beat them both. And Johnny, if Johnny can beat Henry, that's amazing. And he did, and I'm quite happy, so thank you, Johnny. <laughs> Final word on how you feel. I feel uh, pre pre pretty great, I feel like just really thankful for everyone who worked for me because people just see what happened today but it's month and month of work it's month and month of work for my all my support on my crew uh, i mean i spent six weeks with my world group with guys like mario mola tommy zafares who raced here uh, martin von really was supposed to be there and he wasn't so yeah just thank you for every, everyone who worked for me brilliant thank you very much you. and we are just awaiting official confirmation for the overall series results I think that we can just about announce that indeed Vincent Lewis is our champion. There's his better half smiling there, Taylor Spivey. And the reason that that happened, and he's won by there for two points, is because Leo Berger Beat ben managed Knute. to finish in front of Ben Canute. Had Ben Canute finished one place higher in front of Leo Berger, in the finest possible margin wow. you can imagine, then the $100,000 in Super League Championship title would have gone to that other man in that shot right there, Henry Schumann. So had Leo Bergier not started today's race with those bad feet, his French French teammate, Henry Schumann, his French teammate, Vincent Lewis, would, would not have won. Would not have won. Wow. Someone's buying drinks tonight. He was only and meant to make it to the sixth discipline. He didn't want to run twice. And there is Spivey and Lewis, who will share $100,000 doesn't get any closer than that. What a league, what a series. So after watching Zephyrus and Beau Gran and a photo finish, we have a minor placing deciding our champion. It cannot be closer than that. We are awaiting the absolute official confirmation, but that is the word we're getting at this point. Let's have a look back at how it all shook out in that race and this seems like three hours ago Matt Hauser got a great start he let out from Igor Polianski in the swim he'd eventually come to grief and we'll see that in just a second but a great swim from Hauser after finishing 11th yesterday Tommy Zafiris was there or thereabouts and he led early parts of the bike but the big names uh, put, put their way up towards the front there Richard Murray had to find his way through an accident there for Jaden Schofield He's had a few accidents, Jaden Schofield, and that saw him eliminated. But when they began the first run, Johnny Brownlee had a little trip there. It didn't hurt him too much in the end. A good run, a big group in the swim, and we started to lose some reasonably big names as well as we pushed on through this one. Onto the bike again. I can give you now official confirmation that as Matt Hauser goes down there, perhaps he clipped Matt Sharp's wheel. Official confirmation that Vincent Lewis is our Super League champion. He won by two points in the end from Henry Schumann. And that happened because, firstly, he won this race after a puncture yesterday. And secondly, because Schumann finished third behind Brownlee and Ben Canute finished behind Leo Berger. Berger's fourth placing, handing Vincent Lewis Super League champion title. And... Had it been the other way around and Canute had beaten Berger, it would have gone the other way to Henry Schumann. But Vincent Lewis, he said it in the interview, the only thing he could do was to win this race and hope. And he did both of those things. And he comes away with a title that he, Chris McCormack, thoroughly deserves. Oh, without question. He was the form athlete of the series, both him and Henry. But he won every single round. That disappointment yesterday was heartbreaking for him. And uh, I'm very, very happy for him. There is our champion, the man who just missed out by the finest of margins, Henry Schumann. He's down now to talk to Annie. 
Henry, I've got to say, firstly, congratulations on a great race today. Not the result you wanted, and to lose the championships by two points. I don't know what you have to say about that. Yeah, I think uh, after what happened yesterday, it was mine to lose. But uh, Vincent, he's a, he's a strong athlete, and uh, yeah, it's racing. Um, that's how it goes. I gave my best on that day. Louis had a fresh body today. Maybe that works in his favor, but um, yeah, it was... Uh, it was brutal out there. They made me work on the last lap of the the last triathlon, and uh, yeah, I think that really killed me on the run, and I just just couldn't pass Brownlee. But um, yeah, you know, I came into this weekend second. I wasn't feeling great on the weekend, to be honest, and uh, to be, to walk away on second, I think I'm still very happy with that. We did notice after the race yesterday you were clutching your ribs. Was that a cramp, or or is there something going on there? I didn't want to say it, but I, I was really sick coming into the, the, the week and I was sneezing a lot, I was coughing a lot. And I think my stomach muscles are cramping quite a bit and I'm struggling with the breathing, especially in the heat. But you know, no excuses. Uh, we come here to race and uh, that's what I came here to do and I gave it my best and uh, yeah, that's what I came out with. You can say that you're the runner-up of the Super League Series 2018-2019. That has to feel good, even with the disappointment. Yeah, no, I mean, I came in here hoping for a solid second. Um, it would have to take a very good race to win it. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, I'm still happy with that. I want to thank everyone out there for supporting me through the series. Um, everyone back home who's sending loads of messages. Uh, really, thank you for that. Thank you to my family, my fiancé here. Um, yeah, I'm just really happy to wrap up the season and look forward to the, uh, the rest of the year. Henry, we'll look forward to seeing you in the next season as well. Congratulations. Thank you. And here was the finish that chose it all. Berger ended up finishing in fourth position and that is what handed Vincent He's Lewis best. the title. It's quite a way back to Ben Canute. It wasn't any sort of a sprint finish, but had Canute found the legs to finish in front of Berger, Schumann would have been the winner, but was, that was the, that was what changed it. It was Berger's best performance of the series. He finished fourth overall in the round. His best performance won his teammate the, the overall. I don't know what the French drink, but Leo owes one of them to Vincent Lewis. Uh, probably an, es an espresso. Yeah, wine and champagne. Uh, yep, a Frenchman won the title for a Frenchman. Lewis, 107. Schumann, 105. Jonathan Brownlee, well, his points haven't been updated there. He had taken some points as well, and that lifted him up into third position from Mislachuk, who just missed out. Murray, 55 in the end, and there's really important prize money changes between those. So Tyler Mislachuk really launched himself, and uh, Richard Murray's ankle really hurt too. And Leo Berger, Matt Sharp sneaks in to a contract, yeah, he does. which is huge for him. A great finish in the end for Matt Sharp, and he earned himself a contract for season 2019, 2020 as the 10. So all those names you will see again in season 2019, 2020, which starts in Jersey in September. So great work, Mac Sharp. He wasn't in the top 10. He snuck into the top 10. He should be very, very happy. And so will Kirsten Casper, who'll join him with a contract as well. She's at home, his partner. So she'll be happy too that the two of them can both join us again next year. Right now, we'll head back down to Annie, who's with Johnny Brownlee, who finishes third overall. Johnny, well, a hugely successful weekend for you. Perhaps not quite the end you wanted, but we know what Vanson's finish is like. But how do you feel today after the races you've had this weekend? Oh, I knew uh, Vince was going to be really hard to beat today. Obviously, first, he's an incredible athlete, and he, he deserves to be champion. Um, Henry and himself were, they were a lot better than all of us throughout the whole series. Um, but he had came into the age with fresh legs. And I think I was probably the fittest athlete out there. I made a few mistakes, had a shocking swim start and we got beaten up and then I was catching up on the first one and to honest with you, I was thinking about getting through each round then and um, then at the end I was just running control and I was surprised that I beat Henry because um, I was tired going to that last round and I was aiming just to win the overall round but um, yeah, and please, like I said I think I was the fittest athlete out there on the weekend but not the most clinical. I think a lot of your fans out there are going to be really happy to see how you performed in the heat. I think that's really important looking ahead to Tokyo in 2020. Uh, yeah, it is. If I'm honest, the main reason for me being here today was to force me to go on a heat training camp in, in Phuket in Thailand. And that's what I did um, with my training partner. Um, and we went there and I'm, I can race in the heat. This is probably the worst thing you can do in the heat is um, that, kind of, that kind of race format. You spike your temperature early doors. I had a bad first race, so I really spiked my temperature. And then I had to control it. And I've learned a lot about what you need to do, how you control yourself, how you train the heat, and uh, that's going to be very important in the next couple of years. And important for me um, mentally as well, because 
you know, what happened a few years ago stays in the back of your mind and now I can forget about that and move on. And just the last one, your overall thoughts on the Super League series? Uh, it's incredible to race. It, it's amazing for the sport. Um, it's amazing to race in venues like this and it is, I think it's the future of, of the sport. It's, I'm just proud to be part of it and uh, I've been very lucky in my triathlon career to be part of the growth of triathlon. You know, London 2012 was amazing and hopefully I can, I've played a bit of a role in Super League as well and hopefully it'll continue and uh, thank you to the organisers for having us. Great stuff. Congratulations, Johnny. Thank you. What a finish it was. Here is the championship points. Vincent Lewis finishes with 107. Henry Schumann, 105. Just a two-point difference. It couldn't have come any closer. It ended up decided by the minor placings. Tyler Mislachuk with a very well-deserved fourth behind Jonathan Brownlee, who finished with 96 points. So nine back in the end from Schumann. Richard Murray in fifth. And Leo Berger, who finished with 52 points in sixth. But how good was that? What a great finish. What a great weekend this has been. Oh, today's been marvellous. It's been an amazing weekend. It's been an amazing series. But, you know, the big takeaway for me, it's just the class of Vincent Louis and, and, and the absolute sportsmanship of Henry Schumann. You know, he, he came in, he had, a, he had a, a lot of work to do to override Vincent Louis. He had an opportunity yesterday when Vincent got that flat tyre. We, we heard him say he was a little bit disappointed. The crowd here, he's a popular champion, Vincent Louis. He absolutely is. He deserves this one. You talk about triumph to tragedy. Tragedy to triumph is what happened across the course of this weekend, wasn't it? It was absolutely unbelievable. We're going to head to our podium right now. Three very worthy champions. Mr. Jack Lowe from One Degree 15 Marina. And so, ladies and gentlemen, in third place for this evening, from South Africa, Henry Schumann! And in second place, from the United Kingdom, Jordan So our podium decided for the Enduro, our top three, we're going to see them on the podium just again for the round and again for the championship. Tyler Mislachuk's going to join them as well because he's done incredibly well himself, but how good are these three guys, an absolutely wonderful end to our series, a wonderful winner in both the women's and the men's, they're both led in the pink all the way through Katie Zafiris and Vincent Lewis, but how good. Oh, when you cast your eyes back to Jersey almost four months ago and you think of the outcome of that race with Vincent Lewis and, and Henry Schumann off the front in that race, Jonathan Brownlee struggling with form, to see where we got to in Singapore has been remarkable. What a journey, what, an, what a series, what a league. All right, it's time for the round podium. We head back to our podium presenter. Okay, okay. And now, ladies and gents, for our Singapore winners here at the Super League Triathlon 2018 2019 season. We'd like to invite Mr. Justin Park, President of the Asian Triathlon Confederation, to present the championship trophies. And Mr. Arthur Tay, Chairman from One Degree 15 Marina, to present the check and champagne. Okay, you the 
And now, ladies and gents, in third place for this evening, from Canada, Tyler Mistletoe. Jonathan Brownlee wins overall here in Singapore. A great finish from Tyler Mizrachuk. He picks up $10,000 for his trouble. He had a second place yesterday and seventh today. And second place for Henry Schoeman who picks up $15,000 to go with the $50,000 he is about to pick up for finishing second overall in the closest margin I can remember in any triathlon series. What a weekend it has been. Jonathan Brownlee back on the top step of the podium winning a round. And what a boost for him, putting 28 in behind him and launching himself into 2019. Oh, he must be ecstatic. We saw that. We saw the emotion yesterday on his face, winning that, winning that stage, winning that race, and then coming to win the entire round. It's back where he wanted to be. There's been. He's made a real statement going into Tokyo. It's been very, very hot, humid conditions. He struggled with those in the past. He's taken out the best in the world. Bring on Tokyo. It's going to be an amazing event in itself. Tyler Mislachuk's really grown across the course of this series as well. Oh, he's been a standout. He's been working with Jonathan Hall, the Canadian coach, and, and Matt Sharp. They've been focused on this series. They've really refined their skills, and he's had his best result here this weekend, and that's moved him right up the championship round. Hey, everybody, wait, stay back. Stay back, stay back. So much Johnny Bradley and Henry Schoeman being mobbed by the school kids here in Singapore who are enjoying every minute of this. It's quite a spectacle down here on the side of Sentosa Cove in front of 1 degree 15 Marina. Some very, very happy triathletes milling around. We're about to do our championship podium. And after tragedy yesterday, who would have believed that Vincent Lewis would stand on the top step today? I was just looking at the points. I just spoke to uh, getting a look at the points. And it was Ben Canute and Vincent Louis finished on equal points today in today's round. And that, because of the day's round, Ben Canute moved. Vincent Louis moved across Ben Canute and won it what second so ladies and gentlemen here we go in third place from the United Kingdom, <laughs> In second place, from South Africa, a big round of applause, please, for Henry Strum! <laughs> and finishing today, as strong as he started, ladies and gentlemen, our Super League champion for the 2018-29 season, from France, Vincent Louis! 
and presenting our champion, here's his trophy, ladies and gentlemen. A big shout, cheer, round of applause for our champion of the Super League Triathlon. One more time, Jensen Green! It's now time to celebrate. Let's pop that champagne and get this party started here, ladies and gentlemen, in Singapore. The wonderful venue of 1 degree 15 Marina Satosa Boat. The champagne goes and the celebrations begin for Vincent Marine. What a season it has been and what some worthy winners behind us as well. It's been absolutely fantastic here. What a finish as well. A huge crowd coming in to see our final and to see our champions crown. And what more worthy winner than Vincent Lewis. It's been absolutely unbelievable across the course of the whole season. Well, he's been the class athlete of the, of the entire season. You can't, you can't falter him. Yesterday was a huge disappointment. To come back today, to win the way he did, and to take out the championship, marvellous. The championship ends, but Super League does not. We have qualifiers in Bali, we have a qualifier in Poznan in Poland, we have a qualifier in Canada as well. There's details on all of that on the website superleaguetriathlon.com. It's uh, the place to go if you think that you can mix it with these guys when we start everything in Jersey again. And we're going to see another step up in class when we hit Jersey in September. Oh, without question. We've seen that with Bali, with all the qualifiers coming. Jersey will be just around the corner. Vincent Lewis has got a lot to do. I know Henry Schumann's already talking to Franz, or his fiance He's already looking at what he has to do to, to win that title. It's going to be marvellous. When you started this whole thing, would you imagine we'd be standing here in front of around thousands of people, kids everywhere, Super League, an, an aspirational series that was created from nothing and taking triathlon to a new level? When we started this series, this is exactly what we're thinking about, kids bringing youth back into this sport and uh, inspiring a next generation of athletes to do it. We saw the youth and junior racing today. We saw that in Jersey. We've seen that all around the world now as part of the Super League series. It's unreal what we've done. I think it's become insidious. It's just keep feeding itself, feeding itself. And I think, without question, this race this weekend was my favourite of all the racing. There was so much happening. Incredible. We will keep bringing you content on all our athletes across the course of our off-season as they go and race in other series, in the WTS series, long course racing, different World Cup racing. We will bring you the ups and downs of all our World Cup athletes. We cannot wait to bring all of that to you and to see you in September. On behalf of Chris McCormack, Leonid Bogoslavsky, Michael Dolson, everyone at Super League, we hope you've enjoyed it. Macky, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure working with you, Will. We'll see you in September. It is bye for now. And we are underway, a clean start. Yeah.